800-785-9132. That's 800-785-9132. U.S. Tax Shield, 800-785-9132. Check, check. With four new car dealerships and four used car dealerships in three states, Parsons is the largest used car and fastest growing new car dealer in the tri-state area. Take Parsons Ford with huge savings on hundreds of new Fords, financing from 0%, Parsons' goal of financing for all, and Parsons' famous above-market trade-in allowances that help make Parsons number Are we going one on in three minutes? Too. See why so many walk by Man, we had such a smooth broadcast, just me and Nick. Way. We became number one. It was good. You number one. Yeah. Parsons. We never talked about Colin. You've been in Iraq. You're hurting. You're confused. The insurance companies well, we already calling established you. About insurance companies are not your friend. You had to establish they have a duty first. to their shareholders, not to you. That's why you need to call us to make sure that you are maximizing what you are entitled to. We've... <laughs> With four new car dealerships and four used car dealerships in three states, Parsons is the largest used car and fastest growing new car dealer in the tri-state. I pre-planned my funeral to make it easier on my family. They were relieved to know I'll get just what I want. My family actually thanked me for taking matters into my own hands. Turns out having this awkward conversation wasn't awkward at all. Pre-planning is my choice. There are certain things about me my family may not know. Now they won't need to guess. The choices are yours. The peace of mind is theirs. Pre-plan your funeral with Brown Funeral homes and everything will be taken care of find out more online at brown funeral homes wv.com brown funeral homes here for you before the invitations and the dress the flowers cake candles or vows there is an answer to a question proposed with a ring Bechtel Jewelers knows that an important part of your wedding happens before the I do's. We're a diamond store with an engagement and bridal jewelry selection that's both exciting and accessible. On the big day, there's everything else and there's the ring. Make sure you get this one right at Bechtel Jewelers in Inwood. The following is a special sports broadcast presentation of Talk Radio WRNR Martinsburg. Play ball! It's time for the fun and excitement of West Virginia high school baseball. Today's game is being brought to you by Parsons Ford of Martinsburg, The Skinner Law Firm, Laddies, Trips Flooring, Jambo Construction and Fencing, The Myrius Group of Financial Advisors, Smallwood and Small Insurance, CMA Honda of Winchester, Bechtel Jewelers, Cody's Auto Body, Rocks Local Markets, CMA Toyota Chevrolet of Martinsburg, Orsini's Home Store, Farmers and Mechanics Insurance Companies, WVU Medicine Berkeley and Jefferson Medical Centers, The Mansion Ferretti Law Firm, and by Hagerstown Ford. Time I a look very at. pleasant good evening and welcome out to the newly renovated P.O. Faulkner Park. Trip Tobin can't hear anything, can he now? Is that any better, Trip? Oh, I can hear you now. All right, there we go. Welcome out to P.O. Faulkner Park here. First EPAC action of the season at P.O. Faulkner Park. Spencer DePuy, Trip Tobin, and Nick Verzellini, happy to have you with us. Cameraman tonight, Colin McLaughlin, and our intern, Gerald. Right back in the studio is Dylan Bishop and trip opening night here at P.O. Faulkner Park. We were out here last Monday for the sports mix and uh, what a great facility you've been able to, with the help of or using post-14 as the way to get it done, able to get a turf <laughs> infield 
with all the hours of walking and tonight will be kind of payoff for that with all the people that have helped coming out yeah i mean there's a lot of people coming out here later on uh 650 we have first pitch with some of the dignitaries that were helped in you know was very instrumental in making sure that uh the post 14 had a home you know and, and had some uh some place to be a forever home and just uh you know for them to put that kind of effort into and that kind of uh, support into that program you know just shows you uh, i mean just it's just so humbling um but also you know we've seen these ballparks in martinsburg little league uh we've seen some of these other ballparks getting some funding so you know we are starting to see the baseball side of things and not just football uh you know start to get get some of these upgrades and uh you know and, and just putting a lot of effort into getting these young men an opportunity to be seen to be recruited you know to play the game at the highest level at the uh, end uh, some of the best facilities in the state and when you talk about these two teams these are kind of martinsburg and jefferson section one section two powers here in this region and they're the teams that it seems to be it always comes down to uh they're a little kind of both teams have retooled this year yeah you know losing finn griffin and uh samuel roberts was, was big a lot of their outfield you know some seniors are gone in that uh and that in that, that senior outfield was uh you know senior laden outfield the senior shortstop uh so you know that jefferson's doing the same thing in martinsburg doing retooling uh, martinsburg both of their starting you know one and two starting pitchers are gone uh jefferson's one and two are gone a lot of those seniors are gone but uh you know like uh, like coach Bowler said and john uh, coach john lowry said before you know good programs you know next man up you know yeah. they retool you'll hear martinsburg talk about retooling or You'll hear Jefferson saying, next man up. So, you know, these are programs that are deep. Uh, they both expect to be seeing each other in the regional title. They both expect to be fighting each other for that state uh, tournament berth. So, um, you know, I don't think they're, uh, I don't think that either one of them was going to make excuses that they are young or they're rebuilding or that type of thing. They'd rather say they're retooling or, you know, next man up, let's get it done. Yeah, we know a lot of the returners for both of these teams, uh, but kind of want to highlight some young guys or some new guys in the program. First for Martinsburg, you look at a guy, Jameer Brown, the freshman, who can mm-hmm. pitch and can play first. And last night, he, I believe he had a double or a triple and mm-hmm. three or four RBIs in the game. And, you know, just the way things worked out tonight, uh, not necessarily just because of the how he hit last night, but he was able to move up to fifth in the order from seventh. Yeah, there's a lot goes into the order. I mean, you know, substitutions later down the line, you know, banging DHs, which may happen for Martinsburg depending on the pitching situation. Uh you know, there's a lot of things that go into it once you get past your top, you know, three or four guys. At that point, you have to start uh, thinking about situations, you know, later in the game and who's going to be in and in, in those situations at the, you know, the last out, not necessarily the first out. But Jameer can certainly take care of that spot, and he can and he can hold his own. He's really, uh, you know, showing some, you know, even though he's young, he's shown some maturity, and, and he's earned a spot here in the lineup here tonight against in a very big rivalry game. And then you move over to Jefferson, kind of a guy that stands out to us, and we were talking, you'll hear uh, potentially in the interview later on uh, with Coach John Lowry Sr. as a transfer. They got in Caleb Fletcher, and you know, talking to you earlier, I believe he grew up in the Jefferson County area, was part of the Little League system, and then um, kind of maybe ventured away from Jefferson County into Virginia, but now he's back. Yeah, I don't know the full story on it. You're just kind of picking up bits and pieces. Uh, you know, it appears that he was part of the Jefferson County Little League organization, so he, he is, uh, you know, we say he transferred in, or maybe we say he come back. I'm not yeah. sure. Uh, spent some time, I believe, in some private uh, elementary or, or um, you know, prior to high school in some private school. Um, and then I think he went to Woodgrove last year, I think they were saying. So yeah. um, he's here now. Uh He's class, reclassed as a sophomore, they say, and that means that you know, not not much more other than he's maybe a, a little bit of an older sophomore as far as age. But um, um, this man out here, you know, we see on some of the the Virginia travel ball page stuff like that where he you know was clocked in the 86, 87, 88 mile an hour range. So if he can bring that kind of uh, velocity to the EPAC, you know, it's going to be exciting to watch and hard to beat. Yeah, it will be hard to beat. We'll break this thing down some more. Uh, but after this two-minute break here on the Skinner Law Firm countdown to first pitch, Skinner Law Firm, injury and consumer rights lawyers, call 304-245-6613 or to skinnerfirm.com. After this two-minute break, you'll hear uh, bits and pieces of our interview with head coach John Lowry Sr. from the Sports Mix today as uh, we had to come, you know, bring it down a little bit, talk more specifically about this game and, 
and some other key key things in this game. And then when we come back after that, you'll hear uh, my interview uh, just a little bit earlier with head coach for the Martinsburg Bulldogs, Aaron Byler. You're tuned in to the Skinner Law Firm Countdown to First Pitch. We'll be back after this two-minute break. Hi, Kresha Hornby here. Larry DeMarco, broker of Modern Realty Results, believes he has some of the best real estate agents in the Eastern Panhandle. Agents at Modern Realty Results have years of experience and knowledge of the local real estate market. Agents within the office work as a team to provide quality customer service. We strive to always ensure client satisfaction through handling every transaction with honesty and integrity, all while offering competitive rates. Modern Realty Results is veteran owned and managed. Please call us at 262-4222, modernrealtyresults.com. Rock's Grab and Go is made fresh daily. Grab and Go, now available at Rock's, Rock's local market. Rock's Grab and Go is made fresh daily. Grab and Go, now available at Rock's, Rock's local market. To get the best opportunity to be seen and recruited, join the American Legion Post-14 Hornets baseball team. Managed by Trip Tobin, Post-14. Will For some nightlife, then look no further. Laddie's Bar and Grill has a full bar and kitchen, pool table, and entertainment with great food at affordable prices. You can dine in or carry out by calling us at 304-263-5233. Laddie's is open Monday through Saturdays from 8 a.m. to 3 a.m. and Sundays from 10 a.m. to 3 a.m. We serve breakfast all day long, and our lunch and dinner specials are posted every day on our Facebook page. So stop on in to Laddie's Bar and Grill, located at 107 Lutz Avenue in Martinsburg. We're joined now on the phone by the head coach for the Jefferson Cougars baseball team, head coach John Lowry Sr. How are you doing today, Coach Lowry? I'm doing well, thank you. A nice day for baseball today as you have your EPAC opener here in Martinsburg. You're face the Bulldogs, uh, but your team already won to know on the season. You got a 3-2 victory over Frankfurt last week. Uh, what's the different? What, what are we going to see from your team this year compared to past teams? Well, you know, it's the nature of uh, what we do as high school uh, coaches. You, you know, you have guys that move on, seniors that graduate, and you hopefully have guys that are ready to step up and fill in and play. And, uh, you know, uh, it's their opportunity uh, to play, those, those guys that are stepping up. And that's, uh, we think we're, we're fortunate to have some people with, with ability to do that. We had a good game the other day, 3-2. to two. Uh, we pitched well. We, we didn't have any errors in the field. Um, you know, swinging the bats, I think that's something that, that as the season goes on, we'll uh, get better at. But, um, you know, if, if you had, if there's three elements to the game, offense, defense, and pitching, uh, of course, I guess you could add base running to that. Uh, I think, too, that you, you definitely want to be consistent with would be pitching and defense. And I think, uh, I, th I think that we can be that way, and and uh, hopefully the uh, yeah the other facets of the games will get stronger as our season moves on. Coach, there have been some guys that have stepped up uh, after losing such a big senior class from last year. I, I'm sorry, I, I didn't hear quite what you said there. Kind of after uh, losing such a big class from last year, who have been some guys that have stepped up? Well, you know we've. Um, Ryan Hefner, he, uh, you know, he caught for us last year, but he was playing out of position uh, to do that to, to help us behind the plate. Well, he's certainly uh, filled the void for us at, uh, at shortstop. To, you know, Kellen Kinsler left, and at third base, JJ Pavanelli stepping in. Of course, he's got some um, shoes to fill with Finn Horowitz. Finn being a uh, versatile player, not only as a, as a defender and sw swung the bat for us, but he also, you know, uh, was a pitcher of the year in the state and had eight saves for us. So he, certainly he was a, uh, uh, you know, a, a, a young man. We had to find somebody to hopefully uh, be able to do what he did. Uh, the right, uh, right side of our infield returns. Well, I guess we don't return our first baseman, but we do return a person with experience at first base in, in Riley Morgan. And, um, uh, 
J.J. Palminelli, who will play third in place of Finn, uh, you know, he, he, can, he can play first base as well. And our, our starting second baseman from last year, Josh Cienfuegos, is back. So uh, we had a transfer student move in. I think it's going to be a, uh, an impact player for us, uh, Caleb Fletcher. Uh, he's a sophomore this year. He, he can get behind the plate. He can take his turn on the mound, and he swings the bat. Uh, well, for us also. Um, in the outfield, you know, ready to step in, replacing Sam, Sam Wadnitz in center field will be um, uh, Cole Lewis. Uh, Cole, uh, he, he swings the bat, and he can, he can run it down in the outfield. Da- Daquan Scheip, uh, pit, pitching, and uh, in the outfield when he doesn't pitch. Uh, Landon Babington, the senior, is up from our JV team. Um, sophomore Sam Hefner, uh, Ty Duncan, Ty Vickers, you know, the, the list of names goes on of guys that uh, we feel uh, uh, have the ability to play and give us depth and give us flexibility. So, um, you know, it's just a matter of getting all those things sorted out. And hopefully we can, uh, you know, as we play our first stup- couple of games, you know, guys will start to establish themselves and roles will be established. And, uh, you know, we can uh, move on and, and have a um, have a good season. Tonight, your team gets to come to Martinsburg to take on the Bulldogs. What are you looking forward to in the game, and what's your team need to do to get the win? Well, anytime you know you play Martinsburg, it's a uh, it's, it's it's a uh, it's a, a heated type contest. Heated might not be the right word. It's a an intense type contest would probably be better. You know, two schools are rivals. Uh, looking forward to playing on Martinsburg's new uh, new field. I uh, haven't driven by and seen it. It certainly looks really nice, and they've done a great job with that. So, uh, you know, Martinsburg, uh, I know, you know, returned some players of note uh, that uh, they, they're always competitive. Uh, baseball is always a, uh, a stronghold for Martinsburg High School, and it'll be a good test and challenge for us. Uh, we look for a game where, uh, you know, pitching and defense, I think, can again help determine. Martinsburg obviously can swing the bats a little bit. They put 18 runs up on Frankfurt last night, and we only put three. So uh, you can see the challenge that we face in that regard. But we're looking forward to it. You know, we've only got to play once. Some of the other teams have played several times, and you know, we want to get into that stretch where we get to play uh, back-to-back to back and play uh, multiple games per week. And, and uh, you know, in a six-week season, when you're playing 32 games, uh, you know, hopefully the weather will cooperate and uh, you know, our schedule's established, and hopefully we can start getting those games in on a regular basis. Welcome back to the Skinner Law Firm Countdown to First Pitch. It's now time you heard, well, you heard part of the Laddies coaches' interviews, but uh, now that was Coach John Lowry. You heard that on the Sports Mix today. And now you're here uh, from Head Coach Aaron Byler of the Martinsburg Baseball Team. The coaches' interviews brought to you by Laddies Bar and Grill, located at 107 Lutz Avenue in Martinsburg. If you're looking for some fun nightlife and some great food at affordable prices, then dine in at Laddies or call, carry out call by calling them at 304 263 Five two, three three. Here's our interview with head coach Aaron Byler. Well, now the head coach for the Martinsburg baseball team, Coach Byler, and coach, you guys get an 18-6 win last night over Frankfurt, and uh, saw a lot of good things from your team. Yeah, I think the main thing you take away from last night is number one, Ben Rise will ever prove that he could be a quality starter for us. You know, he threw three and two thirds inning. We had him back to 60 pitches, but he did a really great job and earned his first varsity win uh, so proud of him for that effort and I thought our bats came around you know we through the first you know game and in three innings against Hedgesville I didn't think we hit the ball extremely well but I thought we uh, did a much better job with our approach at the plate and moving runners and hitting behind runners and getting guys over and, and capitalizing with guys in scoring position. You talk about timely hitting Canby and Sifra, I believe, combined for nine RBIs last night at the top of your lineup. You could easily move them wherever you wanted, but you keep them at the top. Yeah, you hit Jordan one because of his speed, and you hit Landon two because of the way he controls his bat. And, you know, whether you hit him one or two or three and four, you know, it kind of doesn't matter. They're going to hit the top, like I told you before. And we'll go as far as those top four guys take us, and then you hope that the bottom guys produce a little bit too. Talking about a bottom guy, freshman, Jameer Brown, you move him up the lineup. He's got a couple RBIs on a, I believe, double last night. Uh, what can he bring to your team, obviously, already as a freshman? Well, he's a very talented baseball player, uh, first and foremost. Uh, you know, the reason he moves up in the lineup tonight is not necessarily because of what he's done, although he's been very productive, but just kind of the way some substitutions might have to play out later in the game. You know, when you 
and then we're going to go Mike to Owen tonight, so you're going to have to drop the DH, which means that another outfielder is going to have to enter in Grove's spot, and Rubenthal will hit for himself as the DH, and that outfielder that enters has to hit. Um, so you don't necessarily want him to be five where Ryzen Weber will typically hit because then Ryzen Weber has to come out of the game. So a lot of strategy that goes into that lineup tonight, but we're hoping Jameer can produce in the final. And your opponent tonight, the Jefferson Cougars, they come back. They kind of, they bring some guys back. They bring in some new guys. And, uh, you know, one guy I've been talking about with a couple people is uh, Fletcher Kitty. He seems to be a very good guy that can come in and compete for them and, and be a guy that could, you know, you could come out of nowhere from. Yeah, I mean, Jefferson's Jefferson, you know, obviously. In, in my six years here, we haven't had a whole lot of success against them. Um, but we need to do better. We're going to compete um, no matter who they have in that dugout. Uh, yeah, but, you know, if Fletcher Kid transferred in, it is what it is. Uh, he's very talented uh, from videos I've seen of him. And, uh, it, you know, if he does come into pitch, we just have to compete, just like we have to do with against our starter. Tonight, opening night for you guys at home here and obviously some pregame festivities going on with what uh, Post 14 was able to uh, facelift the uh, the park with uh, you know we talked to you about it at length but just you know a quick thought heading into tonight's game just grateful uh, just grateful for all those guys that contributed all the organizations uh, to trip for you know kind of spearheading the project and we you know like I told you before we're kind of the beneficiary of what they were able to do and being able to have a good partnership and relationship with American Legion Baseball uh, so we're excited to show it off tonight. All right, Coach, thanks for the time. Best of luck. Thank you. That was head coach Aaron Byler. Before that, you heard our interview today from the Sports Mix with head coach John Lowry Sr. With that, we'll step aside for a two-minute break. On the other side of this break, we will have the pregame festivities live from P.O. Faulkner Park. You're tuned in to pack Baseball on Talk Radio WRNR TV 10 back in two minutes. And the streak continues. CMA's Martinsburg dealerships continue to knock out the competition with their competitive pricing, extensive selection, and lifetime powertrain warranty. With over 450 new and used vehicles in stock and on the way, CMA won't leave you waiting on the bench. That's right. CMA's Martinsburg dealerships are once again the most valuable dealers in the area. For the strongest and deepest lineups, visit CMA's Martinsburg dealerships online at martinsburg.cmacars.com today. And good luck to all Panhandle High School student-athletes. We are excited to announce that Comparion Insurance Agency, a Liberty Mutual company, will be at the 26th Annual Home Show on March 25th and 26th at the Martinsburg Roundhouse. Comparion Insurance Agents and Martinsburg residents Glenn Mocker and Chad Williams have access to many insurance companies, allowing them to find the right coverage at the right price for you. From home and auto to life and pet insurance, they have you covered. Be sure to visit them at the show. If you can't make your way over to them, give them a call or send an email. They can't wait to meet you. Lounge in Martinsburg is the place to be. Join us every night to relax and enjoy football or basketball games featuring either the Martinsburg Bulldogs, Shepherd University Rams, or West Virginia Mountaineers. We will have steak night every Wednesday, trip nights every Thursday, and now taco and margarita nights every Tuesday. You can find us on Facebook or call 304 267 7520. The Palace Lounge is located at 1350 Edwin Miller Boulevard in Martinsburg. Randall, why they finish up? Yeah, we can talk about last season between these two teams. Whatever. Well, you want welcome there. back to P.O. Faulkner Park here as uh, get ready for the first pitch. Uh, they're doing a first pitch tonight, I believe. Uh, Mayor Kevin no- Knowles will be taking first pitch among some other uh, dignitaries as well as they kind of show off the park here to the people that help make it happen. Uh, Trip Tobin down there with them will be rejoined by him when first pitch happens. But Nick, it's time for the EPAC Baseball Roundup brought to you by Jambo Construction and Fencing LLC, a veteran owned company that specializes in decks, fencing, and hardscaping. For a free estimate, you can call Bo Bartley at 304 268 5452. And one game already completed, and a couple other games going on tonight. Yeah, Hedgesville getting the win over Hampshire 12 uh, 3. So good win for the Eagles. Uh, kind of expected, but I mean, Hampshire's a team that you're going to potentially compete with uh, in the sectionals if you're on the Jefferson side, you will. 
um, but for potentially regionals, I mean, we don't have necessarily high expectations for the Trojans. It's kind of a spot where they're in a, in a pretty tough situation uh, to try to get past Jefferson or Washington. So, you know, Hedgesville won't see them, but it's still a team that's regionally you'll have to go up against here. And uh, other games tonight, we got Spring Mills taking on Kaiser. Uh, a Spring Mills team that got a huge win over Musselman last week. So, you know, kind of unexpected there. But the Cardinals were able to take down the Appleman. Um, six to three on Friday night, and we'll see what they can do here against Kaiser, a double A school. Uh, Musselman, speaking of the Appleman, they got a win last night, and then tonight they travel to Washington. We, you know, big game here, obviously, yeah. first home game with the turf, but for Washington, it's their first night game, so that's going to be awesome to see uh, how the Patriots do in that one. Uh, but also just, you know, all season long, I think you got to be excited for those kids getting to play Friday night games at, at Washington High School, something they haven't been able to do for their home games yet as a program. So, and I think that kind of that enjoyment is going to make you feel kind of like you're, you're really a high school baseball player. Because yeah. I feel like when you play afternoon games, you feel like you're a JV team. Yeah, to an extent. I mean, Because, you know, JV teams play those 430 games. Right. And, you know, it definitely makes it – a different feel it gives you that atmosphere hopefully with the game being a little bit later you get more people in the stands uh your friends are probably more likely to come to the game because it's not right after school uh so you know you have that kind of atmosphere and you know, growing up uh when i was a freshman we didn't have lights for our football field so you know you talk about you know having that experience of playing on friday night whether it be baseball or, uh, you know, football or any of those sports, you want to have that experience when you're in high school. It's a, part, it's a big part of not only the team that's on the field and getting that kind of night game atmosphere, but for the students as well that don't play those sports, you know, going out to Friday night baseball or Friday night football or Friday night basketball is always, you know, a lot of fun and, uh, you know, it should be a part of your, your growing up experience. So great for Washington that they were able to get that um, you know, I know they wish they always had it, but now they do, and, and you know there should be some excitement there around that team because they're off to a really good start, two and one, and uh, putting up a ton of runs. Whether it may be against lesser competition, you know, still doing it. So uh, they've been impressive so far. That they have here, and uh, now it's time for the weather update brought to you by CMA's Toyota of Martinsburg on Foxcraft Avenue, home to the lifetime un- the lifetime limited powertrain warranty. With every new vehicle that they sell at no additional cost to you, it's a pleasant 41 degrees here in Martinsburg. A great evening for some baseball. Sun peeking through here as it gets ready to go down into the outfield. Um, but uh, should be a great one tonight, Nick, here. We're just awaiting pregame festivities as Jefferson's finishing up their warm-ups on the field. And uh, overall, this one should be a, should be a really good game. Yeah, you look back at last year's series, uh, Jefferson won the majority of the games. Martinsburg only won one of the five. Uh, but first one was a 2-1 win for the Cougars on a Noah Carter walk-off in eight innings. Uh, then Jefferson won 3-1, 3-1, lost 3-1, and then won 3 nothing to win the sectional. So three is the magic number when these two teams get together, at least based off last season. It was 12-6 Cougars overall on the season scoring line. So uh, not a whole lot of offense between these two teams a year ago, but Martinsburg's lost pretty much all of its pitching. Jefferson's lost its two big pieces in Sammy Roberts and Griffin Horowitz as well as uh, Jarrett Day. So, you know, both these teams are pretty much brand new. There is a little bit of experience on the mound, but it's a lot different than last season. So we'll see if, if the series plays out similarly to the previous year. All right, now we'll turn our attention to the P.A., Ladies and gentlemen, please direct your attention to the pitcher's mound where Martinsburg head coach Aaron Byler is joined by Berkeley Legion post-14 head coach Trip Tobin. We're all out here tonight to uh, thank all these gentlemen, uh, their organizations, uh, thank uh, manager Trip Tobin and Berkeley post-14 for all he's done for our program. Uh, without the relationship that we have with Berkeley post-14 Legion, without all these guys standing here, and all of their organizations, what we have here and what we've accomplished wouldn't be possible. So just want to greatly thank them as I turn the mic over to Manager Tripto. Thanks, Coach. 
you look around, you see this beautiful facility. And I uh, just want to thank all those before us that laid the great foundation that allowed me to go out and, uh, and to try to get this uh, facility or get the post-14 a home facility, a forever home. And, uh, you know, it wouldn't be possible if it wouldn't be for all those before us that made this place what it is and what it, what it was and what it now is. And I um, just want to thank the county council. Uh, Doug's here and Eddie's here, Doug Copenhaver and Eddie. Uh, Dan Delier was a big part of that, Jim Barnhart and the rest of the guys. Uh, the development fund or authority, uh, PJ Orsini and A. Bastian were big guys on there that helped us out. Um, the city council, uh, former coach Doug Etherington on there, and the mayor, uh, Kevin Knowles, were big players there. We want to thank our delegates, Jason Barrett and uh, John Hardy, who's here now, and Eric Householder and Mike Height and uh, Mike Hornby and a few others that helped us out. But without these guys coming together and making this a, uh, a project, um, it wouldn't be possible with just one, but they all came together and made it a collective project. We were able to get it accomplished, and uh, we're just thankful for the partnership with uh, the county and the city and P.O. Faulkner Park and Marsburg Baseball that that the uh, post-14 Hornets have a home and a place we can call home and through the summer. And not only is it our home, but it's probably one of the best facilities in the state, and I just can't thank you guys enough. You want to coach? I think Coach Etherington has a word to say. Just real quick, um, way back in 1980, I believe it was, may have been 81, uh, Vic Holmes and I were coaching together. Uh, Vic was the head coach and I was his assistant. But uh, we used to play high school games behind Pikeside Bowl in what was then the senior league field. Uh, then, I guess it was 81 or 82, we came here and uh, I can remember the kids on the baseball team taking batting practice and Vic and I, each one of us on different sides of the infield with a wheelbarrow picking up rocks, boulders, and take them off the field, dodging balls that were hit during baseball practice. So uh, I don't know how many of you remember those days, but I sure do. Thank you. Thank you, Coach E. So I want to introduce to you real quick our post commander, post 14, when we uh, first got this started years ago, uh, Ken Monteagle. Take the trip. I want to say thank you to everybody that supported Post 14 over the years. Uh, this has been one heck of a journey, and I cannot, I can't believe we're here today. Uh, when Trip brought me out here the other day to be on the field for the first time, I almost cried. Uh, as they say, build it and they will come, and you have came. Uh, the community has supported us, supported the American Legion and, and these kids, and, and these kids are getting drafted to, to good colleges. Uh, so this is a great cause. So I just want to say thank you one more time. Thank you to my wife that's put up with all the craziness throughout the years. And today is our anniversary, so happy anniversary, baby. <laughs> Last but not least, we have, oh, excuse me, Eddie, want to speak? Eddie wants to speak. Hold up, Sifra, go back. Hey, how you doing there, young fella? Hey, listen, uh, to all the parents and grandparents out there, thank you for the support that you've shown these kids. You know, with, without your all support, Lord knows what they'd be into. There's a lot of things that, that kids can get into today, and baseball is definitely one of the good things for them to be into. I tell you, we would not be standing on this turf today had it not been for the passion of Trip Tobin. Trip brought everybody together. He got everybody to the table, and, and he, he is so full of passion about baseball that you're very lucky to have him in I, I know I appreciate him. I don't even play baseball, but but his passion is is what drives, is what drove us to get here today. But he got everybody to the table, and everybody you know really became a, a good part of this to make all this happen. So so not only to to your uh, opponents this evening, the Jefferson Cougars, Coach Lowry, and and the and the Bulldogs. Good luck to you this evening and uh, post 14. I hope you have a great season. Thank you. open mic night you ready so here we have the mayor of martinsburg kevin knows well the only thing i'm going to say is let's play ball here
there you have it. Let's play ball from the mayor, Kevin Knowles, as we finish things out here on the pregame show. How about we do this, Nick? We'll step aside now for a two-minute break. On the other side of that break, we'll get your starting lineups and first pitch. You've been tuned in to the Skinner Law Firm Countdown to First Pitch right here on Talk Radio WRNR, Martinsburg TV 10, and on WRNR TV on YouTube back in two minutes. Jambo Construction and Fencing Company, LLC, is a veteran-owned and operated company right here in the eastern panhandle of West Virginia that specializes in decks, fencing, and hardscaping. Find us on Facebook at Jambo Construction and Fencing to see more of the projects we've completed. For a free estimate, you can call Bo Bartley at 304-268-5452 or Jamie Gall at 304-279-5053. We are licensed and insured in the state of West Virginia, and as Martinsburg alums, we say, Go Bulldogs! With four new car dealerships and four used car dealerships in three states, Parsons is the largest used car and fastest growing new car dealer in the tri-state area. Take Parsons Ford with huge savings on hundreds of new Fords, financing from 0%, Parsons' goal of financing for all, and Parsons' famous above-market trade-in allowances that help make Parsons number one for used cars, too. See why so many won't buy anywhere but Parsons Ford in Martinsburg. We became number one by making you number one first. Parsons. Insurance companies like to play games. They say they're on your side, but they aren't. We have a team that can handle any curveball they throw. At Burke, Schultz, Harmon, and Jenkinson, you get a dedicated lawyer, and every case gets a team effort. So you get nearly 150 combined years of experience going to bat for you. And we like to win. Join the team that takes your personal injury case seriously. Burke, Schultz, Harmon, and Jenkinson. We play hard. March Madness isn't just a time for the best basketball action. March is the perfect month to market your home and beat the real estate market madness. Angela Horner is an Eastern Panhandle native and rooted in this community as a dedicated full-time real estate professional for 15 plus years. Let her put her expertise and marketing plan to work for you. Call 304-725-1001 or visit wvpropertyexpert.com to schedule a free marketing analysis. Welcome back here to Peel Faulkner Park. We will get you the starting lineups brought to you by Trips Flooring. Not sure where to go. Who would you trust with your flooring needs? Call Trips Flooring at 304-229-7009 or online at tripsflooring.com. Nick will give you Martinsburg's. I will give you the Cougars first. We'll start here at the top of the lineup. As batting first, number four playing shortstop. Ryan Hefner batting second, playing center fielder, center field number nine, Cole Lewis. Batting third, number six, playing catcher, Caleb Fletcher. Batting fourth, the third baseman, number 18, J.J. Pavanal. Batting fifth as the D.H. and pitching tonight, number 27, Riley Morgan. Batting sixth, playing first base, number 19, Ryan Kelly. Batting seventh, the second baseman, number two, Josh Sinfuegos. Batting eighth, the right fielder, number five, Landon Babington. And rounding out the lineup and left field, number one, Sam Hefner now for the Martinsburg Bulldogs. Leading off for the Bulldogs and playing center field, number seven, Jordan Camby. Batting second, the catcher, number four, Landon Sifford. Batting third, the shortstop, number five, Carson Buber. In the four hole, the pitcher, number three, Michael Lupus. In the five hole, the first baseman, number 27, Jamari Brown in the sixth spot, the designated hitter, Owen Rupenthal, wearing number nine. He'll be hitting for right fielder, number 25, Isaac Grove. In the seventh spot and playing second base, number eight, Ben Risenweber, batting eighth and playing third base, number 24, Braden Oviedo, and rounding out the lineup and playing right field. So, excuse me. Grove is playing left field. I, I misread that. Uh, but wearing number 15, Christian Alter. And that is your uh, Martinsburg starting lineup. So, Spencer, I mean, get to see a lot of new names in these lineups yeah. than what we saw last season. But like uh, Coach Byler said, I believe, on that show we had earlier this season, um, you know, each year the EPAC, you get these new names, and they could be a senior that you never heard of before, but then they go out and, and they hit 340, and, you know, they have a great season. So 
we could see a lot of that between these two programs. And, and with the history of these programs, I wouldn't be surprised if we see a lot of new names have breakout seasons. Yeah, I would definitely agree with that. Michael Lupus on the mound for the Bulldogs. On the mound tonight for the Cougars, Riley Morgan. And uh, here as we kind of get ready for the anthem, it's going to be a good one tonight. As you said, first one to three normally wins this one. Yeah, that's how it rolled last season, but uh, you know, completely different teams this season. So, you know, we'll see how things play out. I would expect uh, probably a low-scoring game because these teams still know each other really well, and you got two uh, experienced but different pitchers on the mound in Lupus and Morgan. Uh, not a ton of starting experience, so we'll see how they perform. All right, we'll be back after this two-minute break for first pitch. Whether it's a strain, sprain, or fracture, WVU Medicine Orthopedics and Sports Medicine in Charlestown and Spring Mills now offer same-day appointments. No referral is needed unless required by your insurance carrier. WVU Medicine Orthopedics and Sports Medicine offers the exceptional care you expect for the injuries you don't. For same-day appointments at WVU Medicine Orthopedics and Sports Medicine, call 304-725-BONE. Providing reliable protection since 1877, we are Farmers and Mechanics Insurance Companies. From small beginnings and over a century later, we maintain our dedication to our policyholders to provide dependable insurance protection and excellent customer service. Protecting everything from your home to your business has never been easier. Our team is here to ensure that you, your family, and your assets are taken care of. We enjoy giving back and doing our part to keep Martinsburg a great place to be. The Honda HRV, CRV, Pilot, Passport, and Ridgeline. They all have one thing in common. They never back off from a challenge. Available with all wheel drive, the Honda SUV lineup has the performance you can count on and the capability to amaze. It's no wonder Kelly Blue Book's KBB.com named Honda the 2022 best value brand. CMA's Honda of Winchester, 3985 Valley Pike. CMA, moving lives forward. Based on 2022 brand image awards from Kelly Blue Book, visit KBB.com for more information. When you've been in a wreck, you're hurting, you're confused, the insurance company's calling you. Insurance companies are not your friend. They have a duty to their shareholders, not to you. That's why you need to call us to make sure that you are maximizing what you are entitled to. We've recovered over $100 million for our clients. Every case is different, no result is guaranteed. But one thing's for sure, we'll treat you like family. Faulkner Park here as we get you set for opening pitch between these two teams. Opening pitch brought to you by CMA Chevy of Martinsburg. Make your way to CMA Chevrolet of Martinsburg on Foxcroft Avenue today for quality vehicles, a friendly team, and professional service at every step of the way. Chevy, find new roads. Trip Tobin rejoins us here in the press box as we get things started here. And uh, what a way to get things started for this ballpark. Yeah, I mean, Martinsburg, Jefferson, what could you ask for? I told the told coach lowry i'm glad you're here to 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 be part of this uh you know first uh first varsity epac game here on the field it's just uh you know two uh sectional powerhouses that have been the regional championship game against each other the last couple of years so you know just a great way to have a uh you know the opening night here and ceremonial first pitch by the mayor hey great pitch by the way mayor uh, Knowles. great pitch because he's he's standing back here he didn't know this morning until trip Decided to comment on the Facebook for the show this morning, uh, but uh, I think he was playing cool. He's that way he could say he was out of shape. He's he's been. I mean, he oh can, no, he, he looked shocked. I, I nah. did rewatch it. He did look kind of shocked. All right, we got first pitch coming in here with Michael Lupus and Ryan Hefner, the shortstop coming in. I'm not going to say he was or he wasn't, but I'm pretty sure he was working out with John Lowry Jr. before the game. First pitch coming here at 7:11. And it is a strike down the middle, a little one count to start things off. And yeah, Michael Lupus on the mound, 28 and a third a season ago, 5 and 1 record, .98 ERA. So that one fouled up, bent out of the, out behind the press box, makes the 0 2 count. Limited start, it's only four starts for him, but he was, he was pretty good out of the pen. Four innings so far this season, two hits, one earned, five strikeouts, one walk, 37 strikeouts to 25 walks a year ago. That one low and outside in the other batter's box. And 
We'll set the lineup here on the on the bases. So Lupus pitching, catching is Landon Sifford, first base, the freshman Jameer Brown. Ben Risenweber at second. Carson Buber at shortstop. Ball right back up to Lupus. He catches it on the fly and first out of the game. Yeah, he calls a little bit of an off-speed pitch on the outer half of the plate. And Heffner threw the bat there, threw his hands at it, and uh, he didn't get all of it, of course. I mean, it wasn't uh, – it was lined back to uh, Lupus, but it wasn't uh, – it wasn't hit on the nose, but uh, certainly got good contact there. Playing short, Braden Oviedo. In left field is Isaac Grove. In center, Jordan Camby. And in right is Christian Alter. First pitch in there. Is it called strike one? In order to have a .98 ERA last year, that means you can't put a lot of people on base, so – you know, he throws strikes. That one hits the turf before it jumps into the glove. 56-footer. The 1-1 pitch on the way. That one catches the zone for strike number two, makes it a 1-2 count. Yeah, there on the outside corner. <clears throat> Maybe a half a ball off, but certainly a. A pitch that's going to be called. 1-2 delivery from Lupitz. That's fouled off to the right netting. Lupitz missed his spot a little bit, left that ball up and over the play. I think Sifford was kind of set up out and down, so uh, just missed his spot there, but uh, took enough off of it to disrupt the timing there of of Cole Lewis and to get the ball fouled off. 1-2 delivery on the way. Swung on and missed for the first strikeout of the evening for Michael Lupitz, second out of the inning. On Cole Lewis. Now up to the plate, the catcher, Caleb Fletcher. We talked about him in the pregame show. Transfer in, but kind of not really. He played his younger ball in the Little Leagues in Jefferson County. First pitch to him. That one's outside and low for ball one. Nobody out. I mean, excuse me, two outs, nobody on. You're going to be kind of careful here. You know, a walk or or a single as long as you don't give a ball. Try to give up something in me to the plate there. You can you can afford to kind of pitch around him and make him hit your pitch. Uh, see how patient this young man is. That one came in as a ball. The 2-0 delivery on the way. That one inside for ball three, a 3-0 count. O two. 2 I mean a 3-0, two outs. 3-0 delivery on the way. That doesn't catch the corner, so Fletcher walks. Put him on first base with a... Four pitch walk. Yeah, not what you want there. Uh, when you get the first two outs relatively quickly, never want to put a runner on, especially in the middle of the lineup. We right. saw in the uh, Musselman season opener, similar situation. They got those first two strikeouts, and then a mistake allowed a, a run to come across. JJ so Pavanaugh, he's going. Plate. He's going to go, and Sifford is going to get him. Going to get him on the throw out. Perfect throw by Sifford. Now we'll end the top of the first inning. We'll be back after this 60-second break, and Martinsburg will be up to bat for the first time. You're tuned into EPAC Baseball on Talk Radio WRNR and TV 10, back in 60. With four new car dealerships and four used car dealerships in three states, Parsons is the largest used car and fastest-growing new car dealer in the tri-state area. Take Parsons Ford with huge savings on hundreds of new Fords, financing from 0%, Parsons' goal of financing for all, and Parsons' famous above-market trade-in allowances that help make Parsons number one for used cars, too. See why so many won't buy anywhere but Parsons Ford in Martinsburg. We became number one by making you number one first. Parsons. You've been in an accident. Why won't the insurance company pay? Because they're trying to save money at your expense. Call Mansion Ferretti for your free consultation. We have the experience to deal with the insurance company and get you the compensation you deserve. Mansion Ferretti, when you need justice. Joe Faulkner Park here, bottom of the first inning, due up for Martinsburg, the top of the lineup, Jordan Canby, the center fielder, the catcher, Landon Sifford, and shortstop, Carson Buber here as Things get ready to get going here in this inning. With uh, at on the on the mound is Riley Morgan for the Cougars. As things get get going here. He gets his warm up pitches in, and uh, Riley Morgan saw some time last year for the Cougars on the mound. Not as much, obviously, Trip, uh, but he did in fact see some time. Yeah, he threw the ball pretty well. I mean, last year they had you know Sammy and and Finn, you know, but uh, 
Riley got some time in there. They, you know, Jefferson always gets their max games in, but um, yeah. you know, he wasn't um, your Friday night per se or EPAC pitcher last year. But of course, neither was Lupus, and, and neither was uh, you know a lot of these other players that are on the field for both teams. But here, as his warm up pitches are completed, that was a quick top of the first inning with the out coming there on the steal attempt, and uh, already in the bottom of the first inning tonight. Do up Jordan Camby. Jordan Camby had a great night at the plate last night. Really, the first two guys in the lineup did. Yeah, they, they you know, Martinsburg erupted last night, you know, for some runs, and, uh, you know, it was a good uh, offensive outing for them last night. And, of course, uh, Ben Rasenweber threw last night, got his very first. Excuse me, varsity pitching victory. So, you know, hats off to Ben. He's kind of lived in his brother's shadow there a little bit, but that happened with older brothers and younger brothers. But Ben certainly uh, making a, a mark for himself this year, playing the middle infield and uh, and uh, and pitching and you know batting in, in the heart of the lineup there most nights. So, uh, good job for Ben there last night as well. Lefty's first pitch to Cammy, who squared the button. He pulls back. It's gonna be a ball. Yeah, Morgan's got a little pop on it coming from the left side. Uh, got lights on out there in the middle in the outfield, so I don't know how that's affecting the batter. Second one in there is a ball as well. Yeah, two different color lights, it appears. Yeah, it was like a green one to me from here. And a purple. Oh, now they're off. Mm, now they're off. So the 2-0 delivery coming. Outside makes it a 3-0 count. Uh, you know, putting a man on... A walk with two outs is a little different than a walk leadoff walk. So, um, you know, can be definitely dangerous on the base pass. Speed kills. 3-0 delivery on the way. That one catches the zone for strike one. Can be seeing some pitches. That's what his job is as a leadoff man. Yeah, you know, he's an aggressive leadoff guy. You know, he's he's a first pitch swinger a lot of times. That one swung on and, foul uh, away. They've been talking about to him about his approach. You know, first bat of the game. And he'll mature into that, you know. He he is a, a young man that's come back, but he's you know he's batting in different positions, a little different approach to lead off as it is, you know, when you're batting in the six seven spot. That one outside, and they're walking. First walk of the evening. Yeah, lefty pitcher and speed on the bases, always fun to watch, you know. Guy at the plate who's hot last night, so you know. Does, does uh, Coach Bowler play get him on, get him over, and get him in baseball, or is he going to play the hot hand and have a, uh, you know, to see if we can get Camby to steal the base and then Siffer drive him in? And Siffer drove in a lot of runs last night. He's going to do the same tonight. That one hit to deep left field. That was going to hit the base of the wall, and it will be a stand-up double as Canby is going to get into third. But a stand-up double, pick it up right where he left off from last night. Yeah, first pitch, it was, you know, came in from the left, and he turned on it and just about hit the 305 marker. I mean, it hit the fence solid. You've seen that uh, wind, wind break out there just uh, rattle, and he just turned on that thing. So give away to, to number two out there who's running a Keegan Everhart maybe. Keegan Everhart. Keegan Everhart's running. Courtesy for the runners, courtesy of the Berkeley Post 14 Hornets. Oh, sweet. At the plate now is Carson Boober. Takes the first one. So Boober don't need to do too much. He's got to get the ball in the air if he can find something or just hit the ball to the right side, get the ball on the ground. The middle's back, giving up that run. The corners are in, but anything on the ground in the middle, down trajectory, is going to score the run. He swings through that one, makes it a 1 1 count. So a lot of opportunities here for him to get an RBI. Uh, anything but pretty much striking out or flying out or rounding out to the third baseman. 1-1 one, one delivery on the way. Swing on, swung on and missed. Makes it a 1-2 count. Need to shorten it up here. Just get the ball on the ground. Give Canby a chance. 1-2 delivery on the way. That's outside for ball two. Evens the count up. Two-two delivery on the way. That one outside for ball three brings a count full. Yeah, he's a he's a pitch away from loading the bases. You know, um, so you, as your boober here, you got to be thinking he's going to throw me a strike. You got to be sitting on a strike, thinking strike, strike all the way, and then uh, you know reading the pitch. Three-two delivery on the way, fouled off to the backstop. Trying to get a reading here from our 
Post 14 coach Ethan Greenfield. He's got that radar gun out there. Not turning his head, though. He may not have gotten that one. He's writing us imaginary numbers with his fingers that we can't read. Full count delivery. That swung on. Popped up and out of play. We've got Morgan. She's thrown a lot of pitches here this inning. That's going to play into this game as well. As he, uh, you know, early in the season, not sure what he will do, you know, what they have on the pitch count or what they'll, how far they'll let him go. But long first inning is not good on that arm. 3-2 delivery. That does not catch the outside corner. And that loads the bases here with no outs. Another walk. This time to Carson Boober, who works himself into a walk. Yeah, I agree with the call. It did come around the plate there, it looked like. Uh, you know, he nibbled at it, but it just didn't quite get there. He just missed on that one. Due up now is the pitcher, Michael Lupus. He did have some good late movement, though. Got another big game in the area tonight with Washington under the lights. Yeah, we talked about that. Musselman. That was in our APAC baseball report. It's going to be a good one down there. Yeah, Mike Lupus due up here with the bases loaded and no outs. First pitch into him. He swings on that, pulls that down the line, though. Stays out of play. Let's start him off with a curveball. It looked like it kind of broke in. And good thing because uh, Lupus was on it, and it broke in and caught him in the, um, you know, got him up on the handle there. The 0-1 delivery coming from Morgan. That one swung on and missed for strike number two. Same thing here. We got the corners up. The middle is back playing for double play. You know, a good, you know, not an RBI situation here. If Lupus can get the ball in play. That one swung on and fouled <clears> off <throat> once again. Looks like Martinsburg is going to come out swinging here in the middle of the order. Got the freshman on deck, Jameer Brown, a big, big kid, big uh, lanky freshman. The 0-2 delivery to Lupus. That popped up and once again out of play. But seeing a lot of pitches here, forcing Morgan to throw a lot this, this so far. Yeah, he's going to know about 20 pitches here already out the first four batters and nobody out yet. So, you know, Jefferson would love to give up that one run for a double play here, I'm sure, just to uh, – Keep away from the long, long inning. That one, he can't find it, and he kicks it out, does Fletcher, but he's able to keep it to the just a few feet to the right of himself. Curveball in the dirt, hit that turf. Had a little different spin to it uh, from the lefty. Kick to the first base dugout side. See Coach Cross over there giving Morgan the sign here. Looks like he's going to try to go in the outside corner. That one swung on, hit into deep center field. Going back on it is Lewis, and he's able to make the catch. But coming around to score the first run of the game is Jordan Camby. It's a one nothing lead for the Bulldogs as an RBI. Yeah, that was nearly a base clearing. For Michael Lupus on the sack fly. It was nearly a base clearing double as both runners had moved up as far as they could, uh, waiting on uh, Lewis to make that catch as Camby stayed tagged. So. A great play by Lewis. That ball was hit, you know, 350, 360, and he took it all the way to the warning track. Freshman Jameer Brown comes up last night against Frankfurt. He went one for two with four RBIs and three walks. First one in there is called strike. He moves up from the seventh to the fifth spot just due to the way that things worked out in the lineup tonight. But uh, definitely getting a lot of action as a young freshman. First pitch into him was a strike. The 0-1 delivery on the way. That's inside for a ball. Certainly doesn't look like a freshman, though. No, he's a big, big young man in there. You know, um, certainly would not pick him out of the crowd as to be the freshman in the bunch. The 1-1 delivery on the way. That's foul, or excuse me, popped up. And making the catch is Babington, and going to third now is Siffert. Oh, a nice play by Boober to move up. Siffert moves up and allowing Boober to move up. That's it. That's Everhart running for Siffert. Or excuse me, yes. Yeah, the ball was hit down the right field line, a long run for, to the right fielder there, and uh, Keegan was tagging up the whole way. Boober had came off a bit. Uh, when he seen the throw was, or the play, when he seen the catch was made and the throw was made to third, he went come back, tug up, and went to on the, to second. Nobody was covering, so now you got minute second, third, good at bat, 
you know, there for Jameer moving runners up. First pitch now in to Owen Rubenthal, the designated hitter tonight for Isaac Grove. And these guys, Rubenthal, Ryzen Weber, Oviedo, we heard a little of him in varsity last year, but Christian Alter, a lot of guys you heard JV last year, yeah. big contributors to JV. Huh. Swung through that second one on the 0-2 count here, two outs. Yeah, mostly all JV players down there at the bottom of that line up there last year coming in and making a difference this year. Yeah, Morgan will strike away from getting out of this thing. The 0-2 delivery on the way. That one catches the corner for a called strike three, and he gets out of the jambo jam. Mm -hmm. We'll head to the top of the second inning after this 60-second break. You're tuned in to EPAC Baseball on Talk Radio WRNR and TV 10 with Martinsburg on top, 1-0. You've been in an accident. Why won't the insurance company pay? Because they're trying to save money at your expense. Call Mansion Ferretti for your free consultation. We have the experience to deal with the insurance company and get you the compensation you deserve. Mansion Ferretti, when you need justice. Remember when you were a little kid and saw your first deer? Oh, how cute. As an adult, maybe you've had a different experience. Where'd that come from? Bambi mess up your dream machine? Call Cody's Auto Body today at 304-901-4777 and get the work done right the first time. Cody's Auto Body, 851 Wilston Street in Martinsburg, has a team of auto body professionals with a lifetime of experience putting your ride back together again, regardless of how it got that way. Cody's Auto Body. P.O. Faulkner Park here as we get you set for the top of the second inning. Martinsburg on top, one nothing. Jefferson coming to bat here. J.J. Pavanel is up to, to the Pavanelli. Pavanelli? Pavanelli. Okay, I wasn't sure. Uh, your little brother, Will Pavanelli, was in the JV game playing first. Uh, the Pavanelli family. And he hits, gets that one, but it's out of play. That's a hard foul ball. I believe J.J.'s a senior this year, and uh, Will's a sophomore. So, uh, like the Hefners and the Horowitzes, we got brothers coming through. Roberts. And the Roberts, yeah. The 0 one delivery tight and inside for ball one. Definitely helps when you have kind of the, those brothers throughout your program. Feeding through, right? Free picks. Yeah. The 1-1 delivery on the way, swung on and hit into shallow right field. Alter Calling it off his alter, and he makes the catch. Called off Ryzen Weber. Well, Alter came hat. a long way. Came almost all the way into that outer ring of the outfield turf. Lost his hat. Yeah. That was a thing last year in EPAC play where hats were falling off. Remember that trip? Yeah. Everybody now we already lost checked one. Look, how's the camera views tonight? We're getting the, the no net camera view. Yeah, it looks pretty good. Everything looks pretty good, I think. First pitch now into Morgan, and Morgan fouls that one off. Certainly uh, appreciate you, and, and uh, I know it probably bugs Coach by a little bit <laughs> to have a hole in his netting. But I uh, didn't cut it. Oh, yeah, definitely not. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't me. Riley Morgan fouls off the first one here. It's that one right back up to Lupus. Lupus able to glove it and throw it over to Brown at first for the second out of the inning. That probably would have sawed off a, a wooden bat. It took him right on the hands there as it run in on Morgan and uh, certainly uh, caught right on that handle above the hands. Lupus is moving through here. Ryan Kelly, first baseman tonight for the Cougars. First pitch into him is outside. No, Lupus, Lupus not throwing the ball really hard. He's finding the spots. Um, you know, his curveball is working, and, uh, you know, he's throwing strikes and keeping these guys off balance so far. So, you know, hats off to him. That goes to show you that you don't have to throw the ball 80, 90 mile an hour to, uh, to you know to get out. So he's pitching to contact, but missing barrels, and you know that's what you want to do here. If you want to go deep in the game, you have to uh, you have to get quick outs like he's doing. One one delivery on the way, outside for ball two. And he hasn't left anything over the middle of the plate. He's been, you know, you know inside corner, outside corner. Ball's running a little bit, using this off speed. So so far so good. That one catches the corner to make it a 2-2 count. In to Ryan Kelly, the first baseman. 
That one just a little further outside than the previous pitch makes it 3-2, a full count with two outs. Nobody on top second. Full count pitch on the way. That one fouled off. Mm. Called Sifford in the nugget. Come up and kicked away to the right side. The full count delivery once again from Lupus. Swung on and fouled off. Out of play. And you see Lupus staying on that outer half. If Jefferson's, uh, you know, the ball's popping up that way. If he can get him to, you know, be out in front like that and uh, swing at that outside pitch, you're going to get those pop-ups to the right side, That those weak pop-ups. As you see, Alter kind of come in a step or two. That pitch on the way, and that hit into shallow right field. Just in foul territory, coming in on it is Alter, and he makes the catch for out number three. Great catch by <laughs> Alter. Great catch, and then he had to slip and slide out there in the bullpen. That will do it for this half of the inning. We'll be back for Martinsburg's half of the inning. After this six-second break, you're tuning into EPAC Baseball on Talk Radio WRNR and TV 10. Jambo Construction and Fencing Company, LLC, is a veteran-owned and operated company right here in the eastern panhandle of West Virginia that specializes in decks, fencing, and hardscaping. Find us on Facebook at Jambo Construction and Fencing to see more of the projects we've completed. For a free estimate, you can call Bo Bartley at 304-268-5452 or Jamie Gall at 304-279-5053. We are licensed and insured in the state of West Virginia, and as Martinsburg alums, we say, Go Bulldogs! Not sure where to go or who to trust with your flooring project? And start with Trips Flooring, proudly serving the area for more than 25 years. Specializing in floor sanding and refinishing, along with installation of new flooring, including hardwood, tile, vinyl, laminate, carpet, and the hottest trend in flooring luxury vinyl, tile, and luxury vinyl plank. Are you on a budget? Check out their warehouse, cash and carry, or call 304-229-7009, or visit them online at tripsfloorsanding.com. Welcome back to P.O. Faulkner Park. 789 guys do up for the Bulldogs. Ben Reisenweber, Braden Oviedo, and Christian Alter. And uh, talk about that. The bottom of the lineup trip is is mostly a young core. Oh, yeah, they're all young. You know, <clears throat> you've seen Rupenthal last inning was a, you know, basically was, you know, he was, you know, big JV player last year, contributor. Here he is, uh, you know, him and the rest of the bottom of this order here asked to uh, play here on a EPAC rivalry night with Jefferson and, and, uh, and get it done. So watch these boys grow up quick here tonight and this year. Rising Weber to the plate. And uh, Coach Byler say he really solidified himself as a pitching starter last night after the way he was able to pitch. First pitch into him, low and outside for ball one. Threw the ball well. You know, he may have gotten the start on third tonight in Oviedo and and uh, Boober up the middle, but maybe a little arm care having over on second base tonight. Smart move. Second one comes in there on the 1 0 count is a strike for makes things 1 and 1. A lot goes into writing these lineups. You know, you have to yeah. be in that dugout to see these young men and how they feel. You never know what the reasoning is. We fouled off. We speculate, uh, you know, but um, a lot of things can play into it. As a coach, you can. Think maybe he's over, you know, he's in there at second for his arm, or maybe, you know, they found seen something in that combination. Have in the infield, you just don't know, you know, especially this early in the season. The one-two delivery on a strikeout, swinging for Ryzen Weber. First one down here in the inning. Tough pitch for Ryzen Weber after that curveball up and out, or a fastball up and out. He came with a curveball, kind of uh, down and in on him, and he uh, he bit. Braden Oviedo this year gaining himself some at-bats after being a defensive replacement last year a lot of times or being DH for swings and misses on the first one. Yeah, whenever Boober pitched last year, he generally played second. Or when Lupus uh, pitched, he played third. So he was that the utility guy for the pitcher. The 0-1 delivery in there outside for ball one. It's not liking that car out in the center field with the lights on and blinking on and it might just be our angle, though, Trip. I don't know if it's down there. Sure, they might not be able to see it. Second, or third, me third pitch in there is a ball, two one. I was just thinking that because I feel like I feel like the ump would have stopped things by now if, if the camera can see it. Yeah. <clears throat> right there to the left of the baseball. Mm. 
third pitch, or excuse me, fourth pitch in there evens the count up at two apiece. Two two delivery from Morgan. I went high for ball three. Morgan has looks like a fastball, maybe even a slider. You know, it's similar speed as a fastball, and he has that all speed curve. About to throw his thirty seventh pitch here in the second inning. That one low for ball four as Oviedo gets the walk. And that's exactly what you want to do there, you know, and that part of the lineup, you know, Coach Fowler and you know, I talk with him, I talk with, you know, Coach Lowry too. I mean, you want to uh, you know, those guys as, as high school coaches want to turn that lineup over. The bottom of the lineup has to get on, you know, to get to the top, an opportunity to drive you in. And, uh, you know, as far as defensively, you want to, you know, you want to you know, attack the bottom of the lineup, and then uh, that way the top of the lineup's damage doesn't hurt. First pitch to Alter comes out of the glove of Fletcher. So Oviedo moves to second on a free bag. Puts him in the scoring position here and then, with you know, one out. It's what you want. You want, you know, there's no different than leadoff man being on and bundled over here. You now you got one out in the man on second on the pass ball. So, you know, right where Marsburg would want to be, you know, leading one nothing. One zero count here as stepping out as Alter gets granted the timeout. Well, Riley Morgan, he was mainly a relief pitcher last year. Now mm-hmm. starting here tonight, so a different type of. Uh, Situation for him. Alter fouls that one off, brings the count even at one and one. Right off of Fletcher. Um, that's why they wear that gear. Yeah. Two great plays out there by uh, Alter and right field. You know, spectacular defensive plays. You know, he's only a sophomore. One one delivery high. And you got a ball too. It seems like over the last couple of batters, Morgan's been kind of pitching a little high and a little more outside than he was in the first. Yeah, he doesn't have the control I'm sure he wants. Uh, you know, his pitch count's way up. Um, we don't see anybody one. in the bullpen yet, but i got to think that he's not, you know, if he continues to, you know, his strike the ball ratio continues to stay where it's at, you'll see someone down there soon. A 2-2 delivery. That one swung on and fouled off out of play. Is pitching on the turf any different than pitching on the dirt? Probably, you know, it's if, you know, I'm not sure. I've tried to look a minute ago. I think he's wearing, I think he's wearing metal. I can see kind of shiny. Yeah. So I don't know if he's digging in down there and he's not liking it, not getting a slat he would in the in the dirt. But uh, you know, I, I was kind of watching that. Um, it's outside for ball three. But he's landing pretty well in the same spot, kind of open, uh, and um, doesn't seem to be affecting him too much. He's not he's not getting hung up in it. That one swung on, out of play once again, fouled off. I feel like that, where the pitcher's mound is, is going to have to be kind of the most manicured part of that turf. Yeah, today we brought down some, uh, you know, some pellets down out of the parking lot there and and uh, groomed it and have to groom it after the game again. you got to keep that full so that you don't get down yeah. to the turf. Uh, swung lining. on and missed for the strikeout as Morgan comes back to get the strikeout, his second strikeout of the inning, third of the game. So he gets out. Alter will go to the top of the lineup with Canby with a runner on second. Jordan it's Canby's time to shine here as he did yesterday. Have a few RBIs. First one low and inside. So now here's where Canby has to, you know, his approach has to be slightly different. Now he's not the leadoff man. He's two outs with the man on second. He's got to be looking to, you know, drive the baseball and to try to drive this run and use his speed. Big gap there in right center field. 1-0 delivery on the way. That one catches the side of the zone for a strike. So it makes things one and one. Morgan's approaching the 50 pitch mark here. That one outside and high for ball two. Of course, the other part of this with two outs, you might want to pass it down to the hot-handed Sifford. You know, take what you get. Um, Got to be the approach here. You know, not swing anything bad. The 2-1 delivery on the way outside for ball three. I believe Coach Byler told us in the pregame interview who they're going to after Michael Lupus, but we don't know who Jefferson will go to, and they're a little bit fresher. They've only played one game, so 
Yeah, they didn't play over the weekend or, or last uh, night. Or Monday, huh? 3 1 delivery on the way, and he walks Camby. So two walks tonight and two plate appearances for Jordan Camby. Puts runners on first and second. I'm well, surprised we haven't seen him out of it. Yeah, he let me work through. Looks like he's getting up now as soon as you said that. Here he comes. <laughs> it's like he that. heard you. Well, Coach Lowry usually doesn't wait, wait too long. He so. doesn't. And it's super. I mean, you know, unless he sees something wrong with his delivery or, or his mound presence, which we haven't really seen. I've been kind of watching him in the turf, uh, you know, as far as his delivery. But, um, you know, that really hasn't been a problem. His mound presence has been excellent. You know, you haven't seen any shrugging of the shoulders or disagreeing with the umpires, things like that. So, you know, he's he's been competing. And I think as long as he does that, you know, Coach Lowry is happy to let him go. It's a one nothing game. Even though he has struggled some, he, you know, he's gotten out of it. But probably the hottest hitter in Martinsburg lineup up at the moment with men on first and second with two outs. It didn't look like, from what I was able to see there, that he was necessarily even talking to Morgan. It looked like he was talking to his defense. Defensive there alignment, alignment, maybe? He may have told Nonetheless, him to. Nonetheless, Sifford coming to the plate. Sifford doubled and, you know, hit the wall hard on that last, on his first at bat, which... You know, raise it a few feet, and that's a home run. Four-foot fence, and that's out of here. Yeah. The first pitch came into him as a strike, so the 0-1 delivery on the way, two outs. That went low for ball one. Sippard's seen the ball really well. He's seen following that ball into the catcher's glove, uh, you know, giving information out there to Ovi. So the dirt ball. 1-1 one, one delivery coming from Morgan. That one outside makes it things 2-1. and one. Certainly bringing that pitch count up, you know, as Morgan's over the 50 pitch count. Early in the season, you know, 60, 80 pitches, maybe, I'm not sure. That one catches the strike zone, so brings things up to two and two. Here with two outs and two on here in the top, bottom of the second inning for the Bulldogs. 2-2 two, two delivery, that fouled off to the backstop. Yeah, he stayed with that curveball. It could have been a changeup, but it didn't break a lot. <clears throat> Something had a little bit of downward movement, but Sipper stayed on it and uh, turned those hands loose late in the, in the delivery there and caught a piece of it. Two two delivery from Morgan. That swung on, hit into left field, but it's shallow left field coming in on it was Hefner, and he makes the catch for out number three. We'll head to the top of the third inning after this 60-second break. You're tuned in to EPAC Baseball on Talk Radio WRNR and 210 back in 60 seconds. This is Eric at Hagerstown Ford. Over the last decade, the way we buy things have evolved. Now, you get on your phone, click Want It, and it shows up at your front door. At Hagerstown Ford, it is that convenient. We've changed the car buying experience on the I-81 corridor forever. And with a return policy better than Walmart, there's absolutely no reason to buy a new or used car, truck, or SUV anywhere else. Just like Amazon, Hagerstown Ford will deliver the vehicle to you, where you are, and on your time. And if you don't want it, return it, no questions asked. Why waste your time at a car dealership playing the dumb back-and-forth games? Besides, we hate it more than you do. I assure you, no dealership from Winchester, Virginia to Washington, D.C. will beat our price. No dealership from Chambersburg, Pennsylvania to Baltimore, Maryland will beat our price. And no other dealership will allow you to return it if you don't want it. Hagerstown Ford absolutely provides the best experience at the best price. Visit HagerstownFord.com to schedule your VIP experience. Click on the vehicle you want and get your new ride delivered to you at no risk. See dealer for details. Go Faulkner Park here as we get you set for the top of the third inning. Due up is the 7-8-9 guys for the Cougars. Well, that's Justin Fuegos, Landon Babington, and Sam Hefner. Obviously, we know Justin Fuegos last year had a pretty good season. I believe he came in. Was he the transfer in from Arizona last year? Yeah, his dad came in. Uh, he's got a younger brother. I think they were on the um, Border Patrol, something to that effect. I think I was talking to him, and uh, they got transferred in here. And uh, so Jefferson getting a couple guys that, uh, you know, came in, not necessarily uh, as far as from Arizona. I mean, uh, excuse me, Fletcher's not from Arizona or that far away. Fletcher just coming from, you know, Virginia school, uh, living in the area. But uh, certainly seeing Fuego is coming 
across the country here and then residing in Shepherdstown. Yeah. And uh, and getting a, getting some play in time here in Jefferson. Here, Josh, last year, an energetic young man, full of passion. You know, seeing him uh, get excited in his first couple, first year here, and uh, animated young man gets uh, gets on base, gets around, draws walks. Uh, you know, has his own base percentages up, so does the right things and things he needs to do for the bottom of the line up there for Jefferson, getting it turned over. First pitch in there was a ball. This one a strike, so even things out at one and one. Played good defense over there at second as well. Yeah, he's solid over there last year. Him and Kinsler were really solid in the middle. High and tight for the strike. Great placement there by Michael Lupus. Coach Lowry's not liking it. Kind of turning his head and walking down the line, but <laughs> can't get that overturned. I want to low and outside to the other batter's box. Certainly some uh, somebody warming up in the, in the bullpen now for Jefferson. Right-hander. 2-2 delivery on the way, strikes him out, swinging. Another strikeout for Lupus. Looks like Fletcher, isn't it, number six? I believe so. Strikeout for Sinfuegos. That's a second one tonight for Lupus as Lam- Landon Babington comes up to hit the right fielder wearing number five. Newer guy in the lineup. Was not in the lineup last year. Ball hits the glove of Siffer and then hits the backstop. You know, Jefferson um, went up here to Frankfurt and played, didn't put on too much of an offensive uh, performance up there, and certainly not tonight so far against Lupus. And, uh, you know, offensively they'll have to figure it out as they move through the season, just that as you say that. Hit on a line to left field. Grove will get that one. Babington getting a base hit there in the eight hole. Just what the doctor ordered. So first hit of the evening for the Cougars. Another young man coming to the plate here in the nine hole. Sam Hefner. Ryan Hefner's younger brother, one would presume. First pitch to him is low and outside. And this is the first time tonight that uh, had to have a guy on with less than two outs. For Lupus, swung on and missed. Evens got up in one and one. He only faced. He's only been in the wind or the stretch one pitch because yeah. I think. It was a I steal. think Fletcher took off on the first yep. pitch. One one delivery on the way. That one catches the zone for strike number two. Looks like his older brother. I, I can only presume, like you said, Ryan is uh, on deck there. Someone could could uh, let us know if that's true. That one outside for ball number two brings things even once again at two and two. Tough spot here. Two two delivery, one out. That one swung on and tipped foul tipped into the glove of Sifford, so that's a strikeout. Second strikeout of the inning, third of the day for Lupus, and Siffert there with sure hands. Now we're yeah. back to the top of the lineup with two outs and one on. Foul tip, got a delayed call there from Keith Housen. Proper call there, and he looked out. Uh, Dave Boyd uh, confirmed the catch, so we got a strikeout there on the foul tip uh, caught by caught by Siffert. Uh, Siffert yep. First pitch now to Ryan Hefner. That one. Hits off the top of the glove and comes out, but doesn't go too far away from Siffer. Got a text Keeps from running. Robbie Scheip, uh, you know, Daquan's uncle, that uh, the Hefners are brothers. There we go. Thank, from, uh, thank you there, Rob. Colin, that it is Fletcher warming out there. So. Fletcher is, um, you know, projected and seen on some social media where he can pump the ball in the, in the high to mid-80s. So uh, it's going to be a lot different from this... Uh, 1-0 delivery. Hefner hit it to straight center field. Camby makes the catch, and that'll end the inning here. Around two strikeouts and a single. We'll head to the bottom of the third inning after this 60-second break. You're tuning to EPAC Baseball on Talk Radio WRNR and 10 back in 60 seconds. 
with four new car dealerships and four used car dealerships in three states. Parsons is the largest used car and fastest growing new car dealer in the tri-state area. Take Parsons Ford with huge savings on hundreds of new Fords. Financing from 0%. Parsons goal of financing for all. And Parsons famous above market trade-in allowances that help make Parsons number one for used cars too. See why so many won't buy anywhere but Parsons Ford in Martinsburg. We became number one by making you number one first. Parsons. With four new car dealerships and four used car dealerships in three states. Looking for some nightlife? Then look no further. Laddie's Bar and Grill has a full bar and kitchen, pool table, and entertainment with great food at affordable prices. You can dine in or carry out by calling us at 304-263-5233. Laddie's is open Monday through Saturdays from 8 a.m. to 3 a.m. and Sundays from 10 a.m. to 3 a.m. We serve breakfast all day long and our lunch and dinner specials are posted every day on our Facebook page. So stop on in to Laddie's Bar and Grill, located at 107 Lutz Avenue in Martinsburg. One, Ryan Morgan's night has ended after two innings, one hit, one run, one earned, four walks and three strikeouts on 56 pitches, facing 11 batters. And Kayla Fletcher moves in. You know, a lot of kind of unknowns for us. We haven't seen him pitch before, uh, but he'll come in to pitch and try to figure out who's in to catch. Trying to get my game changer up so I can find it. It's like oh. 16, maybe? It's a double digit number. <laughs> Talk to Daquan before the game a little bit. I think he was going to, you know, he would have been in this lineup as a, you know, as a senior there, but possibly pitching tonight. Uh, as um, His ankles tweaked a little bit out there in the outfield. Jefferson to practice. Looks like he got it dinged up a little bit, so he's out of the lineup and probably not going to pitch there, according to himself. And uh, so, you know, that's a big, a big hit for, I want foul for Jefferson. Right away. What number is that? I can't quite see. Let's see if I can put game changer. It's on not the, on the game changer. I just checked. I wasn't in there thirty seconds ago. I believe sixteen is what I said. Cole Smith is sixteen. Right. That's. Could be AJ Spears. AJ Spears into catch. Shout out to Chuck Lynch for getting that to us. AJ Spears as Boober hits that one deep into the sky, but that's going to come down in left center field as Lewis camps under it. That was straight up in the air. Now up to bat. Is Michael Lupus. Now ready for the Royals. Number three, Michael Lupus. He had nothing else has changed except for uh, pitcher is out. Riley Morgan's out. Spears is in. And uh, the rest of the outf outfield, infield is the same. First pitch now into Lupus is low and outside for ball one. That makes sense. I don't remember Morgan playing a lot of the field last year. Maybe a little bit of outfield. Yeah. That one high and tight, but it's going to stay a ball. So 2-0 now to Michael Lupus, the opposing pitcher. What did we just get a confirm on the gun at, He was running at 85. Hmm. Had 84s out of the Boober and uh, the Lauder Friday night. That one swung on and hit into deep left field. Going back on it is Hefner. But that one has left the park. Home run. A solo shot for Michael Lupus. Makes it 2-0 Martinsburg. And we knew he had home run power. We saw that last year, and uh, he's done it again. Yeah, he hit that ball hard, fast ball. I mean, 84, 85 mile an hour, and he just drove it. And, uh, you know, Caleb Fletcher has uh, come here to Martinsburg tonight, and, uh, you know, he chucked it in there. And in Martinsburg, um, you know, Lupus found the barrel there and sent it <laughs> over into the woods there. So, um you know, welcome to the EPAC here. It's, it's a tough place to play, tough place to pitch. These two teams, you know, find a way to beat up on each other no matter uh, no matter what. They they both seem to pick it up for this rivalry. Jameer Brown at the plate. First one bounces off the catcher's mitt and to the left. And you have to think that seeing Lane on uh, Friday night, you know, 84, 85 mile an hour long like that is helping Martinsburg here, you know, adjust to this you know, speed of, of Fletcher. 
Galoop has smacked that. He did. Yeah. And last Monday when we were here with you and Gibbs Byler, he said, you know, our identity is not going to be a home run team. Mm-hmm. Uh, but they're able to hit a few at least. Yeah, that Michael Lupus is one of them. That ball curled like a, you know, it had a little, had a little Call draw. A, a little draw on, there. on the drop. Makes it 1-2 here with one out. I thought it was going to hit the scoreboard, but it kind of cut left there at yeah. the end and went into the woods. It was definitely hit hard. 1-2 delivery on the way outside for ball two. He's still sitting at 85 here on the radar gun here in the press box. So 2-2 uh, two, two delivery outside for ball three brings the count full. He hasn't been able to master his curveball there yet as far as nibbling or um, you know, trying to throw it for a strike. He might also, too, be getting used to pitching off of the turf mount. That one swung on, fouled away. The freshman coming in, getting a, maybe some hacks at that, uh, that velocity, and you know, it looks like Jameer is just, uh, you know, he just looks calm. You know, he doesn't ever look jumpy to me. You know, he doesn't jump at the ball. He's kind of smooth. Fouls that one off behind us. He said Fletcher is only a sophomore, right? So. He's mm-hmm. reclassed as a sophomore. From you believe you told me that trip? Well, that's again all hearsay. You got to watch the gossip around. But supposedly, um, you know, he's a sophomore or maybe an older sophomore as far as you know age goes. Brown um, strikes out. According to some of the guys he played travel ball with and things, he's you know the other juniors like Boober and some of those guys. Um, but you know, regardless. Once you're in high school, you're in high school. It doesn't matter if you're a senior, sophomore, what have you. You get an air to compete. Um, the good thing is Jefferson will have him for a couple more years. Yeah. First pitch now to Rubenthal in the zone for strike one. Had to be some mid to upper 80s on that one. 1-0 deliver. delivery. That swung on into left field, and that'll drop. Owen Rubenthal with a single in the right center field. That sounded good, too, off the bat. Hey. Hey, Rubenthal got that uh, the bat out there, got it off the end a little bit. Probably a good thing. He didn't get more of it because it flew out, but he <laughs> got enough to get it over the second baseman's head and in front of the right fielder. So things are going for Martinsburg at the right at the, for Martinsburg at the, at the moment. Now at the plate, Ben Risenweber. How's that one off? I think Martinsburg is just saying, you know what, um, we're going to take our hacks, you know. You're going to throw the ball hard, and we're going to be ready for it, and, you know, we're not going to worry about striking out. We're going to go. Yeah, Michael Lupus helping his own cause earlier in the inning with a solo shot to left field. And Jefferson's going to throw strikes. May have been some sort of throw over on Ruben Thaw. He gets back just in time. Hit and run or something there. Um Throwing back once again, the ball. Lands in the catcher's, or excuse me, coach's box. Kicked off Ryan Kelly's glove there off of the hip of of Rupenthal. And after Coach Ballard gave the sign there, it looks like uh, they're going to be a little cautious. The one delivery thrown down the line back to him, but he gets back in time. 1-1 one, one now the pitch count. Cole Smith, who could also catch for this team. He pitched in the first game, so I'm not sure if that would be, you know, play into tonight's game. That one hit off the end of the bat, and that's going to drop. So Rubenthal, or Ryzen- Risenweber, excuse me, with a single after a Rubenthal single. The Rubenthal Risenweber. They both drop in there for hits. So back-to-back singles here for the young guys on the Bulldogs team. As Braden Oviedo steps up to the plate. Nothing Fletcher can really do about that. I mean, just a great, uh, you know, just a, a C&I hit there for, for Rasm Weber. Up there, you know, taking his hacks. And uh, good things happened there for him. First pitch now to Oviedo in there for strike one. See Fletcher taking the ball in and out of his mitt during the windup. That could be a balk if, you know, if Keith... Sees that you see him put it, take it out and put it back in a couple of t- earlier. Kitches the mm. corner once again for a nice strike call. 0 2 now. That was down a little, but it was a curve. I mean, I couldn't see much from there. 
So Coach Bowler's going to slow down Fletcher as he's on, you know, 0-2 real quick. So he's just going to get Oviedo up there and say, hey, you know. It's, I think it's, it's really just a coach's job here to slow down, to slow him down. 801 here in the Eastern Panel. If you're listening on Talk Radio WRNR, Martin so I think John gets a free one here. John gets a free uh, meeting there. Now, since he called offensive timeout, he gets to go out and talk to the pitcher and the defense, and that's just uh, some gamemanship there. I believe he does anyway. 0-2 count here, two outs, two on. Martinsburg up 2-0 here in the bottom of the third inning. He's got 0-2. Here, Coach Byler on the swing. Two strikes, two outs. If you see the bat moving, it's time to move. And Fletcher steps off. Smart move by Fletcher. I mean, after a a coach's meeting and signs, you know, you see if they'll give themselves away, see if something's on you know, just a sort of a deek. A deek. The 0 2 delivery on the way, low for ball one. The pitcher got the deal in there. Coach Bauer called timeout, and, uh, and nothing else. He bought Oviedo at least one more pitch. 1 2 delivery, two outs. That one bounces off the catcher's mitt. And it'll bring both runners. It will advance one base, so that moves Rubenthal to third. And Ryzen Weber to second. Both runs now in scoring position here. Two outs. Yeah. Bottom third. Martinsburg already up 2 nothing. With Oviedo at the plate. If Oviedo can do like Ruben Thaw and Ben. Find some green. Even with the blooper. He's going to score two runs. 2-2 two, two delivery. And called strike three. That'll end the inning as Oviedo goes down swinging. But not before. Lupus can help his own cause. And it is still a shot to deep left field. We'll be back after this 60-second break with Martinsburg on top of Jefferson. 2 nothing heading to the fourth inning. After the- and the streak continues. CMA's Martinsburg dealerships continue to knock out the competition with their competitive pricing, extensive selection, and lifetime powertrain warranty. With over 450 new and used vehicles in stock and on the way, CMA won't leave you waiting on the bench. That's right. CMA's Martinsburg dealerships are once again the most valuable dealers in the area. For the strongest and deepest lineups, visit CMA's Martinsburg dealerships online at martinsburg.cmacars.com today. And good luck to all Panhandle High School student athletes. My kids, you know I want the best for you, don't you? We need to have a conversation. End-of-life planning is no one's favorite discussion, but the relief of having everything in place when the hour of need arrives is a gift. Give it to your family. Plan ahead with us. Brown Funeral Homes, a leading provider of cremations, invites you to explore the many flexible options of cremation. From environmental considerations to the benefit of greatly reduced cost, it may be the perfect answer for your family. Online at brownfuneralhomeswv.com. Brown Funeral Homes, here for you. Welcome back here to P.O. Faulkner Park. I'm going to suck down a ice piece of ice. Martinsburg on top 2 nothing as we head to the fourth inning with Jefferson up to bat. From Martinsburg, get this early 2 nothing lead. Lupus pitching well. Uh, it's pretty clear that this team early on has been able to you know, swing a pretty good bat despite being a young team. I mean, I know 18 runs yesterday against a lesser opponent or at least a smaller school, but still, I mean, you've had a couple of good outings so far, and early on they look to have a good approach at the plate. Yeah, I mean, they're doing a really good job of playing here with this uh, Jefferson team. You know, they're young as well, feeling their way through. But, uh, you know, Fletcher, who, you know, has been touted as one of the better, if not the best, uh, hardest-throwing guy in the EPAC at the moment from what we've heard. Uh, you know, they're staying, they're swinging the bat, getting some blue pitch, certainly got – uh, you know, not only a few blue pitch, but, you know, we've got an absolute rocket by Lupus who laid it, you know, pushed that thing to the left of the scoreboard and out into the quarry. The 1-1 delivery on the way, that's fouled off. Again, it's doing a good job of just, of just um, <clears throat> you know, eat, using the outside part of that plate and having Jefferson just slap at it, you know. That's pitch number 44-45 upcoming here for Lupus. Struck out three, walked one with one hit. That one low for ball two. Evens the count here at two and two. 
Michaels went through the lineup. Uh, one hit and one walk. And uh, going back through the second time here, see what Jefferson can do. That one fouled off to the Bulldogs dugout. Look at that Cooper clean down. <laughs> Cooper off his bucket. And Zeke made a nice backhanded play there, barehanded. And Vic Lupus went running. And you think Lupus would have, you know, Vic would have kind of helped out and maybe uh, shielded Coop over there. But no, he. I think he pushed him. Now brings the count full with that ball. Maybe Vic pushed poor Cooper down as he ran out. The 3-2 delivery on the way. Swung on and missed. Another strikeout. That's the fourth strikeout of the night for Lupus. Second one coming for Lewis. It's now up to the plate. Caleb Fletcher who's now coming to pitch. We've seen him catch and pitch tonight as well as hit. He walked his first time up. Four pitch walk as they kind of pitched around him with that two out. Now they're going to have to at least throw to him. Low and inside for ball one from Lupus. Lupus is careful around, you know, Fletcher. You can see he starts to try to paint the corners there. That one swung on and popped into the night sky in center field. Can be under it, and he makes the catch for out number two. On the, you call that an F7 or F8? F8. F8. If Canby catches it, it's an F8. J.J. Mm-hmm. Pavanel up to the bat. Flew out to right field his first time up. That one's calm on the check swing, so we strike one. Long run by Alter last time that uh, he went up there and got it. A one delivery on the way, that outside for ball number one. Umpire Keith Allison giving just enough that outside corner that's forcing you know both sides to protect that that outer half. That one swung on and fouled out of play. Got a lot on that one. You got that one down by the ticket box. Pretty good crowd tonight on hand to see this unveiling, you know, of the new stadium, I'd like to say, and uh, I'd like to call it now. Has it had that stadium feel? Strike three called, looking. Two out of the three men out on strikeouts this inning. We'll head to the bottom of the fourth inning with no three up, three down. We're tuned into EPAC Baseball on Talk Radio WRNR and TV 10. Back in 60 seconds. The Honda HRV, CRV, Pilot, Passport, and Ridgeline. They all have one thing in common. They never back off from a challenge. Available with all wheel drive, the Honda SUV lineup has the performance you can count on and the capability to amaze. It's no wonder Kelly Blue Book's KBB.com named Honda the 2022 best value brand. CMA's Honda of Winchester, 3985 Valley Pike. CMA, moving lives forward. Based on 2022 brand image awards from Kelly Blue Book, visit KBB.com for more information. You can play, work, and explore without joint pain. Whether it's a strain, sprain, or fracture, WV Medicine Orthopedics and Sports Medicine can help you live without joint pain. Our expert team of surgeons offer the exceptional care you expect for the injuries you don't. Specializing in joint replacement, sports and traumatic injuries, hip and knee disorders, foot and ankle surgery, hand and wrist surgery, and shoulder reconstruction. Call 304-725-BONE today to learn how you can live without joint pain. Do up for Martinsburg, the 9-1-2 hitters, Alter, Camby, and Siffer. Not a bad spot for Martinsburg here with a two-run lead in the fourth inning. Uh, 9-1-2, you know, Christian Alter is down there because of his speed, his ability to get on base. So, you know, usually your nine hitter could be, you know, swapped for your, your one hitter. You've seen Camby stay in that spot last year a good bit. First pitch now into Alter for strike number one. Generally, your nine spot is uh, a guy who can get on base, who can run. Fletcher still pitching. Fouls that one off, makes it an 0-2 count here quickly. You mentioned Alter's uh, defense earlier trip and kind of reminds you a little bit of what they got out of Logan Wilt last season. Mm. That one high hits the backstop. Right over the top of Alter, and he kind of stood there like a statue taking it, so... um, I think you reached back and got a little bit on that one. Logan Wilt still on this team. Yeah, yeah he's over there. Yep. Right. 
He had some great defensive plays. His bat started to pick up toward the end of the year as well. So, 1-1 one, one delivery. Foul tipped into the mitt. And that'll be a strikeout. Tough spot for Alter there after he threw the 80-some-plus mile-an-hour fastball over his head <laughs> to have him come back and, you know, chuck at that one. So, set up pitch maybe. They went a, went, went a rat, but uh, nonetheless... Fletcher using his uh, fastball there to get that out. Canby has walked in his first two plate appearances, now comes up with no one on, and he bunts that one right back to the press box level, stopped by the netting. He was going to see if he could draw the third, see if he could outrun the third baseman there as he angled that thing down towards third. But right field really was that spot last year where we saw a lot of rotation and it looks like early this season we're going to see a lot of uh, rotation. Seen Morris out there a lot last year, you know, when he wasn't pitching uh, because, uh, you know, Edwards, of course, was dinged up with that hamstring, so he was hampered kind of the first, which pushed Morris out into the outfield. He made some nice plays for, you know, a larger, uh, or, you know, first base corner style body that he had, but uh, made some really nice plays out there as well, you know. 0-2 delivery low and outside, so the 1-2 to pitch coming. That one swung on and hit and into left field for a single. See the uh, ball. George Camby registers his first hit of the evening. See the ball skipping across there, that sand jumping up. We had that, uh, that sand put in on top of here to kind of level the, the, the turf out, and uh, it kicked across there and found the hole in the 5-6 hole. Siffert now up to the plate. He had a double that had it been a four-foot wall, would have been a home run. Yeah. It can be on base all three times tonight. First pitch now into Sifford. It's called strike one. Not, can't ask much more out of your leadoff. Maybe steal him here with one out. The 0-1 delivery on the way. That one hits the glove, and Canby goes into second. I can see the future. <laughs> 83 mile an hour fastball that gets away from the catcher and Canby's in standing up with Mar one of the Martinsburg hottest hitters to the plate the 1-1 one delivery that one catches the zone for strike number two did you get a reading on that? Mm -hmm. or not guess not 72 on the curveball there you go Fletcher will step off to get Canby back to second with one out here. And it's Canby tough. on second. Tough when you go from 84, 85 to 72 with movement. Yeah, that's quite the drop off. One, two delivery on the way. 72 again, same pitch. Low for ball two. Canby, or excuse me, Sifford seen the ball well. Saw the ball well, especially last night. That one outside for ball three. Brings the count full of three and two. Uh, Trip, what are you going to throw here? He's going to throw a fastball as hard as he can, probably. <laughs> that, that's where you want to check the radar, then. <laughs> full count delivery from Fletcher on the way, and that one's low, and that'll walk Siffert. He threw a 3 2 curveball, see? Just like I said. <laughs> I can't see the future like Nick over yeah. there. <laughs> <clears throat> well, I have to say. Fastball made sense. Ever hard in for the courtesy run of those. Brought to you by Post 14, the premier American Legion team here in the Eastern Panhandle. And, you know, if you did, if you wanted to, to give away, you know, you wanted to try to trick a guy, you're not going to throw a guy like Sifford who's on it a 3-2 three, a three fastball necessarily. Well, if I can throw it 86, I probably would. Mm -hmm. But I can only throw it 86 from 40 feet away. <laughs> Nonetheless... Uh, two on with one out here at the plate. Carson Buber, who walked his first time up and flew out to center his second time up. Good production out of the one-two spot here for Martinsburg. Oh, that wow. one hits Buber. He'll take his base, and we've got bases loaded and one out. A lot of uh, free base runners for Martinsburg so far tonight. And Mike Lupus, who last inning hit a solo shot to left field, is up once again. One out, bases loaded. So Lupus he's trying to help up. himself out once again. Another um, hot, 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 hot bat here for Martinsburg as they've got Jefferson in one of those Jambo jams. I see uh, Canby telling the dugout to get it up, get it up. 
That one in there to Lupus for called strike one. You can see a uh, passionate young man on the mound there. I'm not saying the mound presence is bad. I'm saying it's energetic. Uh, you know, I really like what Fletcher does. He works fast. Um, you know, he's slightly animated, but nothing against the umpire or unsportsmanlike. Just a, just very... Uh, the one delivery fouled off, I believe, or swung yeah. right through it, Lucas did. Yeah. Just, just very quick in his movements, trying to get back on the mound. He, you know, he's uh, very deliberate. And check swing called strike three. And Lupus will strike out. So the base is loaded and one out. Uh, I guess you could say, you know, Fletcher feels like he might have evened the score there a little bit with the Lupus. So Fletcher starting to use his curveball with his fastball, not just I think he came in first, maybe just think of throwing the ball by him. Now he's, you know, he's actually pitching a little bit here to this Marsburg lineup. Freshman Jameer Brown up. First pitch into him is a called strike one here. The base is loaded, two outs. Bottom of the fourth inning, looking for some more insurance runs. Up to nothing. Big spot for the freshman. Using that curveball, maybe he thought he lost a little faith in the fastball after he hit the free walk Sifford and uh, and hit Boober. You know, he's going throwing more curveball since then than fastballs, and it's working. Not only that, but Lupus just crushed that fastball last The 0-1 time. delivery yeah. swung on and missed as Brown wanted to take that one to left field. Yeah, you don't want to feed him another one of those after what he did to the first one, right? Yeah. If he gets out of this, it'll be pretty impressive. That one high called strike three. That'll end the inning here. It's a called strike looking. Mm -hmm. Ends the inning. We'll head to the top of the fifth inning after the 60-second break. You're tuning to EPAC Baseball on Talk Radio WRNR TV 10. Martinsburg on top of Jefferson 2 nothing. Insurance companies like to play games. They say they're on your side, but they aren't. We have a team that can handle any curveball they throw. At Burke, Schultz, Harmon, and Jenkinson, you get a dedicated lawyer, and every case gets a team effort. So you get nearly 150 combined years of experience going to bat for you. And we like to win. Join the team that takes your personal injury case seriously. Burke Schultz, Harmon, and Jenkins. We play hardball. Rock's Grab and Go is made fresh daily. Grab and Go. Now available at Rock's. Rock's local market. Rock's Grab and Go is made fresh daily. Grab and Go, now available at Rocks, Rocks local market. Welcome back to P.O. Faulkner Park here, top of the fifth inning, due up the five, six, seven men for Jefferson, that being Riley Morgan, Ryan Kelly, and Justin Fuegos. Down at Washington, it's four nothing, Musselman. Uh, Dylan Stevens is throwing uh, against Colin Reed down there as they have two of their better pitchers on the mound right now, Musselman. After that uh, slow start, he's now picked it up a bit. And uh, Washington, after that fast start with all those runs, have been shut down in uh, four innings by Dylan Stevens. That one swung on and hit in the infield to Ryzen Weber. Ryzen Weber throws over to Brown for out number one. They'll text each other back and forth. Don't worry about it. First out. And now next man up to bat is Ryan, Ryan Kelly. Ryan Kelly. Got a, got a softball score from Jefferson Martinsburg right up over there on Charlotte Prather. 15-0 Jefferson beats Martinsburg. First pitch now. In there for called strike. Yeah, Jefferson softball gets the win. We'll have Jefferson softball versus Washington Thursday on TV 10. State champion defending state yeah. champions. That one swung on, hit up the middle, and that's a clean single into the outfield. Trip, you going to join so us for Ryan softball? Ryan Kelly. I don't know if I can do the softball. You're not an expert? Not an expert at that. <laughs> not an expert at anything. Huh? <laughs> Except for flooring. I know a lot. Yeah, you're an expert at flooring. You got to tell everybody you're the the flooring expert. I know a little about a lot. Just enough to get me in trouble. (laughs) 
All right, do up now, Josh Sinfuegos. Or it looks like we'll have a pinch hitter. Looks like Ty Vickers will pinch hit. So he didn't get to play in last week's game because he was down in Charleston for the ba basketball state tournament. That one swung right up the middle to Lucas. They're going to try to turn two, but they can't. They do get the one out there as Boober mishandles it. So get the lead runner. And Michael Lucas right Boober wanted it bad. He just, uh, you know, he just came up and uh, just kicked out of his glove there. He just the transfer. Picked it back up, still got the out, uh, but um, yeah, he was looking to turn two there. Great play by Lupus. He 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 led him pretty well, you know. It was a good throw back to, back to second. Babington up. He fouls that one off. Oh, oh we've got. Light. That's the second time that's happened in the last year. The last time it happened was a post a post fourteen game. He got a light. Got some glass down on some of the spectators. Yep. Looks like no one's worse for the wear, but we do have some glass. Certainly broke it out. The light's still on. Just Look, I've never seen that until last year's post-14 game, and now we've seen it twice in a matter of a few months. Got the lights are in the wrong place. <laughs> All right, back to baseball here. It's an 0-2 count with one on. That one fouled off right in front of Nick. He doesn't flinch, though. We want to see it find that hole over there where <laughs> Colin's at. Well, really, it's right in front of Colin. Yeah. It's just I'm looking through his camera currently. Well, no, the ball came up right in front of where the glass was, but uh, it hit the netting. Yeah. All right, that one outside for ball one brings a count to one doesn't and two here. Me. Big spot here for Lupus. I mean, he went, he doesn't want to get to the top here, you know. Um, that one swung on, hit into left field, popped up. Grove was going to get to it and out number three. So a pop out, fly out to left field will end the top of the fifth inning. It will leave one stranded. We'll head to the bottom of the fifth inning after this 60-second break. You're tuned in to EPAC Baseball on Talk Radio WRNR and TV 10. Back in 60 seconds. Looking to get your special someone the perfect gift? How about a dream vacation exploring destinations abroad? Or maybe visit Alaska. What about Rio, Budapest, or Taiwan? Maybe your dream vacation is on the seas, cruising to multiple destinations. We'll start here with the travel agency of Dream Vacations and George Wisdom. Visit vacationsmiles.com. Vacation smiles last a lifetime, so allow George Wisdom to provide you the vacation experience you've always desired and deserve. Looking for some nightlife? Then look no further. Laddie's Bar & Grill has a full bar and kitchen, pool table, and entertainment with great food at affordable prices. You can dine in or carry out by calling us at 304-263-5233. Laddie's is open Monday through Saturdays from 8 a.m. to 3 a.m. and Sundays from 10 a.m. to 3 a.m. We serve breakfast all day long, and our lunch and dinner specials are posted every day on our Facebook page. So stop on in to Laddie's Bar & Grill, located at 107 Lutz Avenue in Martinsburg. Welcome back to P.O. Faulkner Park here. We're headed to the bottom of the fifth inning. Martinsburg on top, 2 nothing. With, let me flip my scorebook. With, where are we at? The six, seven, eight guys once again. Rubenthal. Rubenthal, Risenweber, Oviedo. Risenweber, Rubenthal combination. R&R. &R. That one swung on. Fouled out of play to the left side. Head over by that new porch out there and left. Yeah. Over to the, that the, idea the family from, porch. Got that idea from Myrtle Beach High School. It was the coach's corner. There. Yeah, the coach's corner. But okay. I believe Byler, he told us, he said, no, absolutely no camera on that deck. That is for my family. And I said, I got you. How about we move the one that we built last year over there? And it's now over there, right next to it. 1-1 one, one delivery on the way. That's in there for strike number two. It's a great pitch there. Great pitch. I think it needs some decor on that uh, deck over there, Trip. It needs some post-14 stuff on it. It needs some tables, some chairs, 
second or the, pitch in there for a ball. The WNR TV ten. I heard I heard some future things coming along above the dugout potential. Well, if Balor ain't dreaming, he ain't <laughs> he ain't sleeping. Looks well, like a grill out there on the deck. He get a party deck. <laughs> he has that accordion um, you know to do list, but brings the count full three and two. Fletcher still on the mound for the Cougars. Three two delivery on the way that popped up. Into shallow left center field, coming in on it. Can't make the catch is Hefner, and going to second. Oh, saved himself. There was Rubenthal. Hefner come flying in. When the ball went up, Hefner called for it. Then all of a sudden he took off. He overran it a bit here in the night light, and uh, he got out there and, and couldn't quite find it. And now um, E7. Yeah, E7 made a really the shortstop made a strong throw in, and it almost got away from the second baseman. But uh, I believe it hit Rubenthal, or Rubenthal could have been on third with that. Looks like Coach Baller may be looking at possibly some obstruction at first. I'm not sure. He's asking. Um, Asking Dave Boyd, the home plate umpire, I think they're looking at the lineup card. Keith Allison, right? Or excuse me, Keith Allison, thank you. I think they might. Something is not to... Uh, now Keith Allison will talk with Dave Boyd. Get you a score check here from the other games going on as... We mentioned, I believe, Hedgesville in action. They're up 3-1 against Hampshire. As we still have the delay here. I thought they already beat Hampshire today. 12-3. No. Was that softball, maybe? Yeah, softball. Okay. That makes a little bit more sense because they would do the softball game first. Yeah. Uh, Ian Wolf, four innings pitched, three strikeouts, four walked, no, uh, no earned runs, one run, three hits, 71 pitches. Head to the top of the fifth inning. And... Uh, Said Musselman Washington in action. Uh, let's say one nothing lead. I believe it's a, on the bottom of the. This delayed for some reason. I have right here on my game changer. I think we're looking for a rule clarification here on the on the um, oh, I wondered what we were hearing. It's a blower because they're trying to blow all the glass out of the way. Yes. No, is that what they're doing? I, I was like, what is going on? <laughs> I believe that, that brings Everhart into the game, I believe. Um, Everhart now runs. Well, actually, you know, he can run and then re-enter. So this could just be the end of uh, Everhart's um, night if, if Rupenthal re-enters. And at the moment now, Everhart is in for Rupenthal. I'll try to throw it back to him. Rasen Weber's here with an opportunity with nobody out to give Martinsburg, you know, a three-run lead as Jefferson is down to their final three outs. Wonder if we would bunt for the insurance run here to move no, them over. We're still on the bottom of the fifth inning trip. Or yeah. you're right. Never mind. I don't know why I was thinking. Hey, Je- Martinsburg with nine outs. Jefferson that with one. The bunting Rosenweber goes over the top of his head and goes to the backstop. That moves the runner. So that right there must be fun when you score around the bunt and you see the ball come right at you and right over your head at about 85. So um, now we're one ball, no strikes, man on third, and infield's drawn, infield's drawn in. So Rosenweber can just put the ball in play here. Strike coming there makes it a Again, 1-1 count. Not fair to throw the ball over your head and throw it right down the middle. It's just yeah. a tough spot. Caleb Fletcher on the mound for the Cougars. That one outside and low for ball two. Yep, Martinsburg got an opportunity here to get this run in with nobody out. They don't want to. Two one delivery. That catches the zone for strike number two. 82 mile an hour. Again, he's only a sophomore, so he's got three years to get that velocity up. 2-2 2-2 delivery on the way and foul tipped into the mid for strikeout or for a strikeout and out number one. Coming up to plate now is Braden Oviedo. Who's walked and struck out. Now for the Bulldogs. Number 24, 
Oviedo. Yeah, these guys, you know, here at the bottom, somebody's got to get this ball in play and give uh, Everhart an opportunity to score. That one bunted right up the middle, a perfect bunt, and they can't get the runner at home. Everhart scores. Martinsburg leads 3-0 on the bunt single. I believe the ball beat him there. Uh, Everhart just made a nice clean head first slide that got and got under. Keith Allison as the throw came to the catcher Spears, and he went to lay the tag down. Head first slide to the back of the plate by Everhart. So great, uh, great job there by Everhart. Um, bunt right back to the pitcher, which generally uh, something you don't want to do on a squeeze like that. But um, uh, it worked and worked perfectly. The magic number from last year was the first team to three runs wins the game. Martinsburg now up three nothing here, bottom fifth. First pitch now to Alter. Alter tries to bunt himself, but that one goes down the line and out of play for. Strike number one. Yeah, a little bit of attempt there at the, the small ball that we expect to see from kind of the bottom of this order. A lot of speed in these young guys, not necessarily a ton of power from them. And with this situation, you want to try to get uh, Oviedo over there to second and uh, you know get back to the top of the order. Yeah, I love the call. That one. <laughs> He's going to stay fair as he chops it. Did his job. <laughs> Mm -hmm. <laughs> Moves the runner to second, but he's out at first. He has swing and bunt, hit that turf, went straight up in the air, and nobody could find it. Alder thought it went behind him, but dropped it right down in front. Kind of got caught cold there. He took off for first, but he was only about five, ten feet away from the catcher tops. Uh, luckily, that uh, Oviedo read it and took off, so moved him up and uh, had an opportunity here for Marsburg to chalk, chalk on it, uh, scratch out another run. Can be up to bat again, move the lineup back up. First one inside for ball one, and this is Camby's fourth plate appearance today. First and second inning, now fourth and fifth innings. Been on base all three times. Walk, two walks and a single. That one high and inside for ball two. Another guy on this team that has home run power can grab the ball to the gap. Or he can hit a bunt and run. I mean, there's a lot of ways for this young man to get on base. And he hit a deep home run for your team last summer. <laughs> he can hit it. 2-0 delivery outside, 3-0. As it just seems like the Je Jefferson really doesn't want anything to do with Jordan Camby tonight. He's uh, he's played a really w good game tonight here, and uh, a lot of uh, things didn't go hasn't gone Jefferson's way as of yet. And now they intentionally walk him. Mm -hmm. Just one more pitch was needed, and he's on first base. He's now been walked three out of the four times tonight. And just like just what I said, Cougars didn't want anything about Jordan Camby tonight. Yeah, I'm not sure there exactly. That's just one to keep the force on. And, uh, you know, Sifford is the guy who has hit you know, him and Lupus have, uh, have the extra base hits. And that kind of ensures that possibly, unless a double play happens, that that they'll see, you know, Lupus possibly um, should uh, Landon or Boober get on. Sifford to the plate, strike one. Sifford last night, six RBIs, I think. I want to say he had six RBIs in the game last night. Jefferson playing for the double play. Uh, four shot at any base. Put Canby on after the first pitch, second pitch there, wasn't it? In uh, infield's back, the for the most delivery part. Delivery from Fletcher catches the zone for strike number two. Bottom of the fifth inning, Martinsburg on top, three nothing, two on. We heard a, one out. A lot about his velocity, um, but um, you know, just straight velocity is not going to get you anywhere. But he's certainly using that curveball now, and he's pitching, you know, backwards. 0-2 delivery, strikes him out looking. Oh, there's two outs. Excuse me. That was there was two outs. Understand now why they walked Camby. Yeah. Sorry about that. Back home. Strikes out looking to end the inning. We'll head to the top of the sixth inning after this 60 second break. You're tuning in to EPAC Baseball on Talk Radio WRNRT 10 back in 60 seconds. 
Looking to get your special someone the perfect gift? How about a dream vacation exploring destinations abroad? Or maybe visit Alaska. What about Rio, Budapest, or Taiwan? Maybe your dream vacation is on the seas, cruising to multiple destinations. We'll start here with the travel agency of dream vacations in George Wisdom. Visit vacationsmiles.com. Vacation smiles last a lifetime, so allow George Wisdom to provide you the vacation experience you've always desired and deserve. We are excited to announce that Comparion Insurance Agency, a Liberty Mutual company, will be at the 26th annual home show on March 25th and 26th at the Martinsburg Roundhouse. Comparion Insurance agents and Martinsburg residents Glenn Mocker and Chad Williams have access to many insurance companies, allowing them to find the right coverage at the right price for you. From home and auto to life and pet insurance, they have you covered. Be sure to visit them at the show. If you can't make your way over to them, give them a call or send an email. They can't wait to meet you. The top of the sixth inning, Martinsburg on top, 3-0. Michael Lucas remains in the game so far. Five innings pitched, two hits, no runs, one walk, five strikeouts on 64 pitches, 40 for strikes, 17 batters face tonight. And Lucas has had a pretty darn good game, not only pitching, but he had his solo shot to give him some insurance. Yeah, I think he's the player of the game so far. I think no we might doubt. have to be interviewing him down there. That was a really tough one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That was a tough one there, yeah, wasn't he, it? He's, uh, he's in the lead for player of the game, which, uh, Nick, you'll be interviewing down there along with uh, well, I can tell you the right now, Jeff, player of the game along with the winning head coach. You need to. So the winning head coach, the winning player has to be on the player of the game, has to be on the winning team. Well, I can tell you right now, Jefferson's not going to make it easy. And that one popped in to right center field. Can be moving on to it. Oh! They collide. And it will be a double or an error. That's got to be an error, right? Error. Yeah, I mean, an error? Alton. I think Camby probably gets to it, but I it think is Alton's tough. Hurt. Because Alter's got the wind knocked out of him. So anyway, it was just kind of in a tough spot to get to. But I think if anybody's going to get to it, Jordan Camby would get to it. I think Camby had called it there. Uh, it kind of looked like Alter. You know, Alter has speed and uh, certainly can. Uh, can get there quickly. That was and the bottom of the lineup, Sam Hefner. It's just lucky that both of them actually could get there. So if that makes sense, they weren't both – like they had let up a little bit as they right. got there. They weren't going 100% towards each other yeah. right at the moment. But, um, you know, first of all, we want to check on Alter out there. But as far as uh, Jefferson goes, I mean, that's just what the doctor ordered there for them. They need something to light that fire. And uh, a little miscue out here by Martinsburg. Um, Coach you know, Cooper registers that as a double. Scores it as a double. So he had a double there. Um, Alter, sophomore, you know, his first year out there with Camby and center, feeling each other out, um, you know, second, third game together. I'm not, I don't know if Alter got the, all three starts, but I think he got at least one of them. Um, Murphy Clement had started the game. Yeah. He had done it. Had just really, really didn't finish that game. But still. So those guys uh, kind of hugging it out out there. He's going to stay in, but uh, Jefferson now, so – not Jefferson. going away easy. You just Jefferson. said that. Yeah, we were talking about players of the game, this and that. This game is far from over by any means. Jefferson does never go away without a fight, and uh, you know they're gonna they're gonna do what they have to do. You know, think about this: they're down three, so they can't play for a run. So they're gonna need you know multiple hits in a row here. But they'll chip away at it if at all possible. Take what Margaret gives them. Ryan Hefner up to the plate. Nice job there by by. Um, Lupus to stay with his game plan. Keep working that outside corner. First one comes in for a strike. That one fouled off right behind us. The Hefner brothers, one on second and one at the plate. Yeah, I mean, it's listed as a double. It's certainly a, an error from these two guys as far as communication error. You know, can you... That one swung on, hit into left center field. Camby tracking it. He makes the catch for out number one. So Camby's no worse for the wear as he, uh, he that ball went up in the air and he was on it. Yeah, I think it, it, kind of the way that I saw it and it made sense that Alter was slow to get up. He took the brunt of the hit. Yeah, he did. He did. And uh, I think it knocked the wind out of him, of course. Now at the plate, Cole Lewis. Right now, it looks like we got a pinch hit. Alejandro Martinez. That one nearly hits him. 
Alejandro Martinez is up. I don't have a grade on it. Like, what grade is it? It's not on the mm -hmm. roster that I received. That one swung on and missed. Brings the count to one and one. There's a runner on second base. Maybe the 13th, 14th? <laughs> we don't know. We're not going to speculate that, trip. Yeah, well, I don't have a, uh, anything on here, any of them. I'm not sure. I know for, based on last year's roster, you know, I know some of them. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, he's a. Uh, new guys, we're not too sure of all their grades. But a 1-1 one, one delivery comes in for str called strike number two, the 1-2 one, delivery from Lupus. That one low for ball two. Trip here, uh, unless this is a softball score, your preseason number one might have just fallen to 0-2 in the EPAC. Who's that? Mossman. But I believe that might be a softball score. Well, they were up 4 nothing. Yeah, then that, that was a softball score. Mossman falls to Washington 9-1 to one in softball. It's one nothing is what I see. I just got a notification about it. So that mm. one fouled, but swung, looked like it hit him. Swung out at Andy, hit him. Yeah, I got. All right, I think the Musselman game changer wasn't working again for baseball. You gotta go to Washington. Yeah, now I got it. We've had that problem mm -hmm. the other night. <laughs> well, this was in softball anyway. It was a nine-one win for Washington in softball. Strike three, called on the swung, swing and miss. Alejandro Martinez goes down swinging as the pinch hitter. It's three strikeouts in that two hole tonight, isn't it? Yep. I mean, they were trying to get anybody on there to give Fletcher an opportunity to maybe try to tie single with a long ball or at least get a couple of runs in with a, a you know, shot in the gap or something. A young man batting in the three spot. Got the ball in play both times. Um, well, actually walked and he uh, flew out, I believe, to center field. So. Uh, you've been on base there one out of the two times, but has a pretty powerful swing, athletic-looking uh, young man there in the box. That one swung on, popped up into first base foul territory, making the catch was Brown, and that will end the inning on the pop-out to Brown. We'll head to the bottom of the sixth inning. After this 60-second break, you're tuned in to EPAC Baseball on Talk Radio WRNR and TV 10 back in 60 seconds. With four new car dealerships and four used car dealerships in three states, Parsons is the largest used car and fastest growing new car dealer in the tri-state area. Take Parsons Ford with huge savings on hundreds of new Fords, financing from 0%, Parsons' goal of financing for all, and Parsons' famous above-market trade-in allowances that help make Parsons number one for used cars, too. See why so many won't buy anywhere but Parsons Ford in Martinsburg. We became number one by making you number one first. Parsons. Before the invitations and the dress, the flowers, cake, candles, or vows, there is an answer to a question proposed with a ring. Bechtel Jewelers knows that an important part of your wedding happens before the I do's. We're a diamond store with an engagement and bridal jewelry selection that's both exciting and accessible. On the big day, there's everything else and there's the ring. Make sure you get this one right at Bechtel Jewelers in Inwood. Welcome back to P.O. Faulkner Park here. Bottom of the sixth inning as we get you set here. It'll be the three, four, five hitters in Carson Buber, Mike Lupus, and Jameer Brown. we got a new pitcher. It'll be number nine. Number nine. Number nine is Cole Lewis. Also, he got, that's why I got, might have got pinch hit for him. Maybe warming yeah. up. Number yeah. nine, Cole Lewis. Cole Lewis comes in. I got a change of Ty Vickers is on second. Cole Lewis is pitching. Babington. So we can reset it with Pavnelli on third, Ryan Heffner on short, Ty Vickers at second, Ryan Kelly first, Landon Babington is in right. Center field is uh, Martinez. The catcher Spears they're showing in left. But I don't know about that at the moment. Um, the Fletcher, you have to add five. I would think Fletcher is still in the game. Um, let's see if I can pick this up. Excuse me. Carson Boover at the plate for the Bulldogs. It looks to me that Cole Lewis pitching. 40 is still behind the plate. Yeah. yeah. Essentially, that's Fletcher in left. First Not pitch sure. into Boober's called strike one. 
So Cole Lewis, another guy we haven't seen. Not sure if he was on that JV squad last year. Yeah. He's a... Like Martinsburg's young men, he, you know, he's being called up, next man up to get things done, getting some early EPAC uh, innings in. Uh, Going to play well later in the season for these guys. Second pitch in there, swinging strike for Carson Boober makes it 0-2. That one catches the zone, called strike three. With one out now to bring up Michael Lupus, trying to help his own cause once again on the mound tonight. 77 pitches, 49 of those for strikes, six strikeouts, and he's one for three with two RBIs, including that home run to deep left center field. First pitch in him outside for ball one. We've seen Martinsburg pitch Jefferson really well over the last couple of years. You've seen with Paulson, Edwards, and, and those guys, and you know, and Martin Jefferson has. Um, Faced him. That one hit on a dribbler to the shortstop, Hefner. Hefner is able to get it out for out number two over to the first baseman. Ball got to Hefner quick. Uh, he got the glove down there, kicked around a little bit, come up throwing, though, and got speedy Mike uh, Lucas out. But back to what I was saying is Martinsburg and Jefferson have really thrown, you know, pitched so well against each other and shut each other down. Like you said, the magic number has been, you know, three the last couple of years if you you know you get three runs on one or the other with the pitching on the other side you were pretty safe to, to say you know you could get a victory out of that you could first pitch in there is a ball to the freshman Jameer Brown that one in there for called strike one brings the count even at one and one Young man's got a couple strikeouts here tonight and a fly out to right field in his uh, P.O. Faulkner debut here on the turf against a very good Jefferson team. This game is kind of... Uh, slowed down a little bit. Yeah, slowed down. The crowds are quiet. Uh, cold, Getting cold, probably. Nobody's knocking the lights out and glass is not shattered. <laughs> Two balls in a row makes a count at three and one. The three nothing away uh, deficit for Jefferson side has them quieted down, and I think Martinsburg side just wants to see us. You know, Martinsburg gets who the gets those um, three outs. Brown will take the walk. His first time on base tonight. We've heard the walk song quite a bit tonight. Yeah, I'm that sure we have. Coach Lowry's not going to be happy with that. No. Looks like Keegan Everhart does indeed come in to that DH spot. Keegan Everhart. Yeah, he had entered there for Rubenthal at yeah. that time. You know, he couldn't, you can't pinch run there for the DH. They try to check Brown down, but he's able to get back. I mean, you can't uh, courtesy run that yeah. spot. Excuse me, you have to enter. He could have re-entered, of course, but Everhart's going to swing here. <clears throat> A one. And Rubenthal, I believe, was what Coach Baller had uh, kind of pregame said was going to be his go-to guy should Lupus, you know, be the next. And I just see Rubenthal come around the corner, so maybe he did throw some. It's the uh, seventh walk given up by Jefferson here tonight. So. Yeah. Well, yeah, so I said Lupus at 77 pitches. Wasn't sure. I didn't ask Coach Byler for a pitch count, but I don't know. Do you let him go out and see where he can go? Yeah, I mean. And Brown's going to go, and that ball is going to go in there, and they're going to call him safe because it dribbled in. He got close. But almost hit the pitcher in the side of the leg. Yeah. So he, Brown he, moves on to second base. With the freshman steal. got himself a stolen base here tonight. He nearly got him still, even with the, the <laughs> dribbler. That's the, that's the turf there for you, because you can throw the ball down, you know, not lose much energy on the miles per hour and the ball as it moves in. 2-1 delivery in there for a ball. Brings it to 3-1. You'll see some plays in the hole and over a third where you'll skip the ball first. Those plays will be easier, you know, on the turf than they would be in the grass when you get a crazier hop. 3-1 delivery on the way. Low for ball four. That's eight blocks. He walks another back-to-back -back walks now. Martinsburg's only walked Jefferson once so far. Michael Lucas has only given up one walk. So 
you, know, you, you allow base runners on the base pass quite a bit, and I mean that's a big reason why Martinsbury has a three nothing lead and not maybe just a one nothing lead with the the one well, solo shot home run. You're going to talk about you know the home run, and you're going to talk about you know uh, double by uh, certainly by uh, uh, excuse me Landon Sifford, but those free bases are what's going to sting you know Coach John Lowry the most, and what he'll preach most about, and of course. The fact that uh, they have no runs on the board and haven't strung any offense together, but he'll be looking, you know, to limit those free bases in his practices, and he'll certainly be looking to um, Coach Lowry. Coach Lowry's coming down to the home plate umpire or the catcher. He must talk to the home plate umpire. We got another timeout here. Get you updated on some other scores in the EPAC. As it is Musselman on top of Washington 4 nothing in the top of the seventh inning. Jason Myers just struck out. So it looks like the Appleman are about to get back-to-back wins. Are we seeing a pitching change potentially? It doesn't look like it. Hey, come down and talk to uh, home plate umpire Keith Allison first. Then he went out to the pitcher, so not 100% sure, you know. The reason was to come down to Keith, but anyway, it ended up being a uh, a visit to the mound. Yeah, and this is the first game in three days for the Cougars, so probably trying to get some things right. Only their second game of the season. So far, offense has been the main issue, even though they did win that first game. Only put up three runs in that one, so. So we're back to action here. Despite the pitching Called mistakes. Strikes. Like we saw tonight with the eight walks, you know, yeah. still yeah, the, in the game. The free bases and stolen bases that Martinsburg have are, you know, adding up to, you know, double-digit free bases. Um, I think there's air free and in the air in, in left field is using Martinsburg another, you know, free base. Swung so, on and missed. Hit by pitch on Boober, too. Hit by pitch. So, you know, those are getting into the double-digit numbers. You get into double-digit numbers and then, uh, you know, you don't have much run support, you're going to lose every time. So I know John... Uh, Coach John Lowry will be addressing that uh, issue and then certainly trying to figure out how to get his offense, one, two, you know, delivery. fired up. Can't frame that one. You so can't take nothing away two, from two. Lupus. I mean, Lupus just shut him down. He's just right. he's used the inside corner, outside corner. He sawed off a few bats. He's got, you know, Jefferson out front, hitting the ball off the knob when they're flaring to the right side and just um, keeping him off balance. Swung on and foul tipped into the mid for a strikeout that will end the inning here. We'll head to the bot or excuse me, we'll head to the top of the sixth inning as Jefferson do or die here after seventh. this top of the seventh. Top of the seventh after this. Sixty second break, do or die for the Cougars after this break. Not sure where to go or who to trust with your flooring project? And start with Trips Flooring, proudly serving the area for more than 25 years. Specializing in floor sanding and refinishing, along with installation of new flooring, including hardwood, tile, vinyl, laminate, carpet, and the hottest trend in flooring luxury vinyl, tile, and luxury vinyl plank. Are you on a budget? Check out their warehouse, cash and carry, or call 304-229-7009, or visit them online at tripsfloorsanding.com. Back to P.O. Faulkner Park here. Do or die time for the Cougars. Top of the seventh inning. We've got a pitching change for the Bulldogs. Pitching change is brought to you by Smallwood and Small Insurance Group in Martinsburg. Your total insurance solution at 121 Administrative Drive. Call 304-263-3361. That ends Michael Lupus's night on the mound. Six innings, three hits, no runs, one walk, six strikeouts, 77 pitches, 49 for strikes, facing 21 batters in line to get the victory. So we've got some shuffling now is coming in. Is Owen Rubin thought a pitch, and what does the rest of the field alignment look like? So Lupus went to third, uh, you know, his regular position, and we have a uh, uh, Boober at short, Oviedo at second, Jameers uh, Brown is at first. At you entered into the game now, I believe, in in the Everhard spot, or excuse me, in Grove spot out there. Excuse me, in Rasenweber's spot would be entered into right field would be uh, Logan Wilt, center field Camby, and then Alter still 
in uh, in right field with Sipper catching. First pitch coming from Rubenthal. You know, there's no reason at all for Lupus to be out other than pitch count, so you have to, you know, tip your cap to Martinsburg. You know, I'm sure he wants to stay in there, and they want this win as bad as anybody. So Wilt moves out to left field. He'll officially. be batting in the Rosenweber spot. Oviedo at second. Mm-hmm. Also, shows confidence, though, in your, in your young, young guy, mm-hmm. Ruben Paul. Give him an opportunity to uh, shut the door on Jefferson here. All right. You know, it would be easy to send him out there with 77 pitches and end up with a 100-pitch night, but, um, you know, you'd be scratching your head and, you know, wishing you didn't should should he get hurt this early. So, Pavanelli at the plate, two balls, one strike. That fouled off makes the count 2-2. Two, two. It's really tough when you say, hey, I'm going to set a number, you know, of pitches on a young man and then uh, stick to it in the game you know dictates otherwise because you know any other time he would just go you know you know two weeks from now maybe three, maybe three weeks from now it is not even a you know do you even consider taking him out but early in the season second start um just uh these coaches are just doing a great job pretty much up and down the epac of getting these guys you know 50 60 70 pitches and getting them out and uh, just you know working them into the season slowly that one hit right up the middle into the outfield. It'll be a clean single for J.J. Pavanel. Pavanelle. <coughs> He's fired up. That would be two. I mean, you're three runs away from tying it, and you got some offense. Yeah, yeah. trying to get his, his guys to round him. Yeah, you got to get him riled up. I mean, Jefferson doesn't go away quietly ever. It wouldn't matter who was on the mound out there. But, you know, who is closing or what have you. But uh, Jefferson's going to take those three outs and make them the hard three outs. Riley Morgan at the plate. First pitch into him. It's high for ball one. They're going to battle down to the last strike no matter what, uh, regardless of the score. If it's 10 nothing or 1 to nothing. these guys don't have any give in them. And, and uh, early season, see what they have. Second pitch in there outside for ball two, a 2-0 count. Rubenthal doesn't walk a lot of people. I mean, he's going to throw the ball over the plate, um, you know, make Jefferson hit the ball. Martinburg is going to have to uh, catch the baseball, make plays. Jefferson has got to try to find some holes. That one high for ball three outside in the other batter's box. I guess I'll, never jinx, want that. I'll jinx him. And that's the other thing about uh, taking uh, Lupus out is it gives Jefferson a little bit of hope because they haven't hit well against him all yeah. game. And even though Rubenthal can pitch, you know, he's a young guy. Yeah, right one. once a guy has your number, you know, throughout the night, you're happy to see him go. You know, whether he's throwing it, you know, 50-mile-an-hour knuckleballer or 100-mile-an-hour fastball, if, if you're not successful against him, you want to see the next guy. 2-1 delivery in there for called. 3-1 delivery in there for called strike two. Brings it full. I would say that was two takes all the way. I mean, and this, you're down three runs, you know, 3-0 counts, probably a two-take, you know, signal there. Payoff pitch coming. That one swung on and missed for strikeout number one for Rubenthal. Down to the final two outs are the Cougars with J.J. Pavanelli on first. Now for the Cougars, number 19, Ryan Kelly. Ryan Kelly, big fella there. First pitch into Kelly. That one oh. hits off Siffer and a free man over to second base. So batter in runner in scoring position now. Siffer won't be happy about that. I believe that would be a, a passed ball as opposed to a wild pitch there. One zero delivery. In there for called strike one. Martinsburg on top, 3-0 here. The Cougars down to their final two outs. A runner on second. And J.J. Pavanelli at the plate. Ryan Kelly. That one swung on, hit into right field. Coming around to make the oh, catch. Nah. Hit alter in the face. Hits alter in the face. Now coming around to score is Pavanelli. One run will score. As they hold him up at third base. And Kelly, but it's not been a great night for Alter. He is down still out there. Yeah, that ball, uh, as, as he took off 
after Jefferson the um, coach ran out of the dugout, so this is not good. Yeah, the fly ball hit him in the face as, as he kind of he caught up to it, and then, uh, you know, I guess you know as, as you're out there in that outfield, he started up in that bullpen area, and he just kind of. He just kind of lost it there, like either in the lights or just jog, you know, bouncing around out there, and the ball hit off his. Hopefully, he caught some of his glove before it got him in the face, but it definitely hit him in the face, knocked him down immediately. Ball skipped away, and everyone after it, I believe, Oviedo went all the way out to the right field corner to get it, and so um, he's being attended to down there. You just make a long run like that, and you get there. Sometimes, you know, you're you you, you kind of maybe overrun it just a pinch. But um, he was he was going for it 100% all out. He's already been dinged up once tonight, banged into um, Camby, and uh, and alter a guy that you know didn't see a lot a lot of time last year at the varsity level level if any. And you know last year right right field was really taken by Isaiah Morris. Caleb Edwards got a little bit of time out there. And, uh, you know a couple other guys when mm-hmm. when Edwards was banged up, but a uh, new guy, you know young guy, younger guy at a newer position to him. Really? First night. He's sitting up now, so that's good. Yeah, so that's good to see. How about we'll, we'll step aside for a 60. Yeah, we'll yeah, stay he's here. He's coming up. up. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Spring Mills falls to Kaiser tonight, 8 nothing. So, interesting score there. Kind of interesting. So, baseball? Yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. Alter took a ding here tonight, but, you know, he got there. That's just, I mean, it looked like it was going to drop in that corner for a triple regardless, but he gets there. It was a fair ball, and uh, yeah, he he took it somewhere off the you know we don't know for sure, but definitely up in the head and neck area, and uh, it kicked away there, and it knocked him out knocked him down pretty quick. Trainers bring him out, see, like you know it doesn't look like his nose bleeding or any lacerations or anything, but he's definitely uh, he's definitely dinged up. It's gotta be hard for kind of opening night here at home. Martinsburg is going to enter third game of the season. Someone in the right field as uh, we see uh, Walter making his way off. The young sophomore looks like Murphy Clement. Maybe wouldn't that be the next? That would yep. be the logical choice here. Yeah, I think that's who it is. Yeah, that's who it is. Murphy Clement. Who did? Who was on the team last year, but didn't play uh, due to the injury that he suffered in football. And Trip, you're bleeding. Oh, you cutie! <laughs> <laughs> Just look over, and I see you bleeding. Mm-hmm. Uh, but Murphy Clement takes over it in right field. Hopefully, Christian Alter is okay. So you know Jefferson team here is just going to use it to fire them up. We've got they've gotten a base hit and now uh, a strikeout and now a ball that's gotten away from uh, Christian Alter out there. That's um, got them set up with the tying run at the plate, and I believe that's is Vickers. Um, yep, Ty Vickers, Ty at, Vickers the at the plate. He pinch hit for Sinfuegos and came in last inning, or I guess the fifth inning. Come off of basketball season. Yeah, he missed their first game last week because he was down in Charleston with the Cougars as they made it to the semifinals but fell to Park South. Hmm. Now batting for the Cougars, number seven, Ty Vickers. So Martinsburg, as we said, Jefferson was not going to just go away, and they haven't, of course. Runner on third, 90 feet away from another score here to make it a one-run game. First pitch in there. Martinsburg basically planned it straight up. Called um, straight one. You know, not looking for Jefferson to bunt here and give up and out. So looking for Vickers to try to work his way on via hit or base hit. Um, Martinsburg playing for the out. And Vickers swings through that one, makes it 0-2 quickly here. As I kind of was going to wonder what that delay would do to Rubenthal. But so far, he's looked sharp. Rubenthal wants to get this game, wants to, you know, you know they want to get out. Get out there, and uh, he wants to get that victory under his belt. His varsity, uh, you know, kind of, I believe, maybe his debut varsity. Did he pitch some at Petersburg um, Not sure. or Frankfurt? But anyway, he uh, out there against a, a very tough Jefferson opponent. One-two delivery. Not one low. Ball two. Two young men that were on the JV teams last year, I believe, with Ty and uh, Ty Vickers and, and Rupenthal, here they are in big spots for their varsity teams this year. So they're asked to grow up and uh, mature real fast and and make uh, 
Make a splash on their varsity teams. 2-2 two, two delivery outside makes it full of 3-2 and two, as you heard the crowd. It was outside, yeah. I mean, from here, it was certainly over on the other side there a bit. Um, Ruben Thal. The full count delivery. Swung on and missed. Martinsburg gets the 3-1 victory. We got one more out. Oh, <laughs> I totally jumped on that. I thought there was two outs. My fault here. We got one more out to get here you before know, the game is made over. I think there was two outs. Yeah. Jefferson's got one more out, and they are not going to go Strike away that out. easy. Strike out on Vickers. You know, we can't call our night until Marsburg gets one more out, or Jefferson uh, scores a couple runs, and Jeff Marsburg gets three, gets out three outs. So we've got to we've got to stay in the booth a little longer here. Tough game here. I mean, Ruben Thaw's throwing some guts. Jefferson's throwing some guts. I mean, it's nice to see these both these teams that are rebuilt or retooling and next man up mentality is getting it done. Jefferson, uh, you know, struggling a little bit offensively Bradley here tonight. Single tonight. He could bring in the, the one run to make it a one run game, but he foul tips that one. Makes it a 1-1, one, 1-2 one, one, count with two outs. Babington, though, obviously has the ability with that single he hit tonight to make to keep this game going. See how big some of those, you know, you see with the one run here, one run there, one run, and, you know, that's just, how, you know, when you get those one run innings, you know, you chip away. Marsburg had bases loaded a couple times. One, two delivery. That's fouled up near the bank of lights. Martinsburg, field, but Martinsburg had, bases, had bases loaded there a couple of times with, you know, one or less outs, and we got away with one run, kept the game close, and that's why Jefferson, you know, right now is is in the game and ringing the bell. So hats off to them for, for getting out of those jams and minimal damage. Raleigh Morgan and uh, Caleb Fletcher doing that, and uh, it's just been a phenomenal night of baseball here in the EPAC. One, two delivery, swung on and missed. And now Martinsburg wins with the touchdown to Whoa. first base. Jameer Brown gets it. Martinsburg wins three to one. And three, the magic number once again this year for game one. Is Nick, you might want to head down there, get things going. I'm headed down there. And uh, we'll step aside for a two minute break. When we come back, we'll have the Rocks Local Markets post game show. You're tuned into EPAC baseball once again. Martinsburg wins three to one. Over Jefferson to start EPAC play 1-0. We'll be back after this two-minute break. Remember when you were a little kid and saw your first deer? Oh, how cute. As an adult, maybe you've had a different experience. Where'd that come from? Bambi mess up your dream machine? Call Cody's Auto Body today at 304-901-4777 and get the work done right the first time. Cody's Auto Body, 851 Wilston Street in Martinsburg, has a team of auto body professionals with a lifetime of experience putting your ride back together again, regardless of how it got that way. Cody's Auto Body. If you're in an accident, the first thing that you have to do is call 911. You have to get medical care immediately. The next thing you need to do is call us. When you hire us at the Skinner Law Firm, what we do is we are gonna investigate your case, and we're gonna lay out the options that you have, all at no cost to you. We will use all of our resources and all of our experience to get you what you deserve. The Skinner Law Firm, skinnerfirm.com. Hi, Crescia Hornby here. Larry DeMarco, broker of Modern Realty Results, believes he has some of the best real estate agents in the Eastern Panhandle. Agents at Modern Realty Results have years of experience and knowledge of the local real estate market. Agents within the office work as a team to provide quality customer service. We strive to always ensure client satisfaction through handling every transaction with honesty and integrity, all while offering competitive rates. Modern Realty Results is veteran owned and managed. Please call us at 262-4222, modernrealtyresults.com. The game may be over, but don't go away just yet. We've got a complete game recap, analysis, stats, the player of the game, and we'll prepare you for our next broadcast, all on the post-game show. So let's return to the field and rejoin our Talk Radio WRNR broadcast team. Mark 
care of 3-1 victory for Martinsburg over Jefferson as they begin EPAC play at 1-0. And Jefferson falls to 1-1 one one on the season 0-1 in the EPAC. We're now time for the postgame show. Brought to you by Rocks Local Markets with convenient locations all around the eastern Panhandle. Rocks fast, fresh, friendly. Nick, you'll hear from him with a couple of, with Coach Byler as well as the player of the game in Michael Lupus here momentarily. But uh, Trip, this was a... Uh, all around great game. This is what you expect between two EPAC teams. Yeah, well, you know, you knew. I mean, Jefferson, Jefferson wasn't going away that easy. You know, they were going to fight down to every last out in what they did. Um, you know, they have a couple of bad breaks there in this game. The ball didn't quite roll their way at times. Um, you know, and a couple of blue base hits, but ultimately. You know, I think if you had talked to their coaching staff over there, the free bases kind of was their undoing. The home run by Michael Lewis was a was a big lift for the Martinsburg team. And, um, you know, from there, their pitching as far as Lupus and, and, and Rubenthal was just phenomenal tonight. Kept Jefferson off the base paths. Uh, you know, Jefferson was in trouble, you know, a few times. Martinsburg left a lot of base runners on. I'm sure Coach Baller will talk about that in his uh, preparation as we move forward in the season about the guys that got left on. But he'll praise his guys for good at bats against, uh, you know, Caleb Fletcher for standing in there, especially the young guys, seeing that kind of velocity for the first time. The guys coming up from the JV showed a lot of maturity. But, you know, Jefferson and Martinsburg both are young, and uh, they showed that they're going to stand toe-to-toe with uh, Martinsburg Sr. and, and – uh, and certainly with Jefferson's pitching staff, the Martinsburg young guys are going to stay in toe to toe with that. So, you know, they've, you know, until someone knocks them off, these two teams are going to be, you know, sectional uh, front runners every year. You know, I thought we talked about Musselman and Musselman having that pitching staff got off to a little rocky start. They, you know, they had a great win last night against Jameswood, and now they're leading down there at Washington. And uh, so I think we're just going to see great baseball all the way around in both sections. And hats off to both of these teams for coming out here with a lot of young guys and just giving us a great baseball game again. All right, once they get set up down there, I, I think we want to kind of maybe position it with Colin. I think we're good. We'll now send it down to Nick with the player of the game, the WVU Medicine player of the game, Michael Lupus. Thank you, Spencer. Down here with our player of the game, Michael Lupus. Uh, Michael, six strikeouts for you tonight on the mound. Uh, first start with the uh, new turf um, against a rival like Jefferson. What was really clicking for you on the mound tonight? Uh, honestly, it was my cutter. I kept uh, leading them with fastballs, getting them 0-2, and then breaking the cutter on the outside, and that's what was working. You had a home run to that game as well. So uh, what was that like for you in a team that is a team we talked to Coach Byler before the season. He thought you guys would have to rely a lot on your speed, uh, but you were able to get that one uh, and, and really crush it out there. Well, it felt amazing. You know, past two years, Jefferson has beat us. So it just felt amazing. It felt warm. Early season win against, like you said, Jefferson, a team that's beat you guys most of the time over the last couple of years. Uh, what do you think this does for the team and, and the momentum, especially with a pretty young group? Well, confidence sky, skyrocketing. And we're just going to keep together and letting the bats roll and move on to the next game. All right, Michael, thank you and good luck. We'll now be joined by the head coach of the Martinsburg Bulldogs, Aaron Byler. Coach, uh, big win over Jefferson here tonight. Michael Lupus gives you a great outing there on the mound. What can you say about him? Well, you know, you got to credit Mike. That's a kid, you know, he came into our program, didn't really pitch a lot. Kind of, you know, started pitching as a sophomore. Threw some innings last year, you know, in kind of low, lower key matchups. And then he threw them out here tonight against Jefferson. And, you know, what more can you say? I thought he did a really great job. And then, he, you know, they bring in their – Big time transfer, you know, and uh, he takes them deep. And I thought that was a big, big turning point in the game. Kind of proved to our guys that no matter who they threw out there, we were going to be right there and able to hit it. Game gets close there toward the end. Normally, you would probably keep Michael in the game, but with it being early in the season, you want to keep his pitch count down. Uh, you put Ruben Fall in, and he comes through for you. What can you say about his uh, performance there, especially when the pressure kind of got on toward the end? Well, that's a pretty big situation for your first. Uh, varsity appearance on the mound right so credit to him for coming in there handling the adversity you know christian you know takes that ball off the face goes out you got a big delay you know credit him to handling his emotions being calm came back struck the next guy out and you know just super proud of him too i, I think if if mike and owen can throw the way they threw tonight and then you, you know you take carson who's you know our number one and you know he didn't throw tonight and 
you put those three guys in a rotation, I think we have potential, but we have a long way to go. Coach, this is a different Jefferson team than last year. It's a young team just like you guys, but it's still Jefferson at the end of the day. So what do you think this win does for you guys uh, moving forward in terms of momentum, especially with your young group? Well, I think it's good, but like I told him in the huddle at the end of the game, you know, our expectations that we beat Jefferson every time we play them. You know, we don't, we're not trying to, you know, to see the Cougar on their hat over there and, you know, bow down to anybody. We're gonna, we're gonna play them every single time, and the expectation is, is that's just another win. But it's a good regular season, early season win. All right, coach, thank you, and good luck the rest of the week. Back to you guys. All right, thank you, Nick, for those great interviews. As we uh, wrap things up here, we'll start with the game summary brought to you by Farmers and Mechanics Insurance Companies. When it comes to your home, auto, farm, or business, they're trusted, reliable, and experienced. Call them at 304-263-0809 or go to fmiwv.com. We'll start here. In the, We'll start with the scoring in this one. Um, let me pull up these stats here as they get together here. Uh, it started all on the top of the first inning. Martinsburg able to get a run across, um, or excuse me, bottom of the first inning on a fly out from Michael Lupus. He scores uh, Jordan Camby, and then later on in the game, it is in the third inning, bottom of the third inning for the Bulldogs. They're able to bring another run across on a solo shot from Michael Lupus, helping himself out there. And then in the fifth inning, the run across coming to make it three to nothing. In the bottom of the fifth inning, it was a fielder's choice that scored Keegan Everhart, who was pinch running for uh, who was he pinch? OVA, oh, Rubenthal. 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 He was pinch running for Rubenthal. Actually, came in. Actually entered the game. At entered that the point, game. Yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. And then uh, we saw in the top of the seventh inning uh, the score on the air as Pavanelli would score to make it three to one. And that's the final score in this one. Now it's time for the game stats. Brought to you by Bechtel Jewelers, West Virginia's largest Pandora retailer on Route 11 South and Inwood, taking care of you like it's nobody's business. First for Martinsburg on the mound. The win goes to Michael Lupus. Six innings, three hits, no earned, no runs, none earned. One walk, six strikeouts. Rubenthal gets the save in one inning. One walk, one run, none earned. No walks and three strikeouts. 77 pitches for Michael Lupus, 25 for Owen Rubenthal over to uh, Jefferson's for pitching. Riley Morgan gets the loss two in the third inning. One hit, one run, one earned, four walks, three strikeouts. Caleb Fletcher came in two, two and two-thirds innings. Five hits, two runs, two earned, two walks, seven strikeouts. So we definitely saw what he can do tonight, Trip. Mm-hmm. And uh, Cole Lewis came in for the final inning with uh, no runs, no hits, two walks, two strikeouts. 59 pitches for Morgan tonight, 64 for Fletcher, and 20 for Lewis. Now hitting-wise here for Martinsburg, it was one hit, one run, and one at bat for Jordan Camby on three walks. One for three, Siffert with a walk. Um, One for four with two RBIs is Lupus. Uh, Jameer Brown has a walk. Two for three night for Owen Rubenthal. Um, one for four night for Ben Risenweber going over to Jefferson. It is just a few hits. They scattered four hits this evening. Pavanaugh with one. He goes one for three, one for two. Um, there was Riley Ryan Kelly. And Babington goes one for three. A.J. Spears, who came in, went one for three as well. Uh, but they struck out nine times tonight. That's kind of the story in this one, trip. Yeah, I mean, you know, Jefferson um, struck out a good bit there tonight. Uh, the opportunities that um, that they had, uh, you know, weren't – they didn't have a tremendous amount of opportunities offensively tonight. Very rarely got a buck man, you know, past second base. Uh, tip your cap to uh, Lupus on that. But, you know, that's something we don't always see out of the Jefferson team. So, uh, you know, right now – Offensively, you know, they're not the team that we know they can be. and know they will be, you know, down the stretch, and we know they'll play plenty of games, get lots of at-bats, get that lineup straightened out, that coaching staff over there. You know, they'll they'll work day and night. Uh, they won't settle, and uh, hats off to them. That's why they're a program. You know, they'll next man up. They'll figure out someone in that lineup that can hit, and they'll get them in there, you know, and um, and they'll get them hitting. And as far as Marsburg goes, I mean, I was like, you know, Coach Ballard said when Lupus came in and hit that home run against Jefferson's 
you know, po- probable, you know, one of the better pitchers on their team, I think that says, hey, you know, we're here and we're not we're not scared of, you know, whoever. And, uh, you know, we're going to we're going to be going to. We're gonna, we're, we expect to win. That's just yeah. what he said. And, you know, Jefferson ex- expects to win. So two great programs. Jefferson come out on the, the, the you know, just the, the other end of this one tonight. But expect, uh, you know, that to, you know, these two guys, teams to play each other, you know, up to the seventh inning every time they play. Yeah, and officially we'll give out the WV Medicine player of the game to Michael Lupus. WV Medicine, Berkeley and Jefferson Medical Center's leading healthcare here and everywhere. Michael Lupus again gets the win on the mound. Six innings pitch, three hits, no runs, one walk, six strikeouts. And then he goes at the plate. He goes one for four with two RBIs, including that monster home run to left field, which if it was online and stayed online, it could have hit that scoreboard. Yeah, it was close. It kind of it had a little cut to it to the left, so... You know, it uh, it cut back in and down into the quarry. All right, here why I hope our guy back in the studio, Dylan, sending him some quick facts for his post game. Uh, let's talk about where we'll be tomorrow. We'll have more EPAC baseball for you tomorrow, and we'll be down once again at Hedgesville, I believe, if I'm thinking correctly. The where are we? The 22nd is tomorrow. Musselman at Hedgesville will be 6:40 mm-hmm. pregame, 7 p.m. first pitch. That's our next broadcast here for you and the uh, trip. That should be a good one. Yeah, currently Musselman is, uh, you know, Musselman has just uh, beat Washington. As Dylan Stevens took the mound and Colin Reed took the mound for Washington. Two great pitchers that squared off and, uh, you know, five hits for Musselman, four hits for Washington. Musselman came out on the uh, winning end four to nothing. So Musselman, uh, since starting, what, 0-3 oh, is now 2-3 two and three with two victories over two really good programs and uh, Washington after scoring all those runs you know 20 couple of runs you know pushing 40 almost 50 runs in three games were blank tonight by Dylan Stevens so that just tells you what uh, what Dylan's capable of as he went six innings only giving up four hits striking out nine and uh, no earned runs so Moore came in in relief uh, in one inning pitched uh, with one strikeout and no earned runs so you know, four nothing. Washington gets blank tonight by Musselman. So tomorrow we'll see if Musselman can even up their uh, record at three and three against another repack Victor uh, uh, opponent. As I believe Hedgesville didn't did play today too, right? Yeah, they're playing yeah. right now. They're up twelve to one. Last checked mm-hmm. over Hampshire High School, but that will do it for us here. It'll be Nick on play by play tomorrow. Trip will obviously be there as well, and I'll be there too. And uh, yeah, so for our guys, our cameramen tonight. Our intern, Gerald Wright, Colin McLaughlin, Nick Verzellini, Trip Tobin. Back in the studio, Dylan Bishop. I'm Spencer Pui saying so long. We'll talk to you tomorrow on the Sports Mix. Tune in at 12.08. Have a great rest of your night, everyone. Jambo Construction and Fencing Company, LLC, is a veteran-owned and operated company right here in the eastern panhandle of West Virginia that specializes in decks, fencing, and hardscaping. Find us on Facebook at Jambo Construction and Fencing to see more of the projects we've completed. For a free estimate, you can call Bo Bartley at 304-268-5452 or Jamie Gall at 304-279-5053. We are licensed and insured in the state of West Virginia, and as Martinsburg alums, we say, Go Bulldogs! Looking for some nightlife? Then look no further. Laddie's Bar and Grill has a full bar and kitchen, pool table, and entertainment with great food at affordable prices. You can dine in or carry out by calling us at 304-263-5233. Laddie's is open Monday through Saturdays from 8 a.m. to 3 a.m. and Sundays from 10 a.m. to 3 a.m. We serve breakfast all day long, and our lunch and dinner specials are posted every day on our Facebook page. So stop on in to Laddie's Bar and Grill, located at 107 Lutz Avenue in Martinsburg. This is Eric at Hagerstown Ford. Over the last decade, the way we buy things have evolved. Now, you get on your phone, click Want It, and it shows up at your front door. At Hagerstown Ford, it is that convenient. We've changed the car buying experience on the I-81 corridor forever. And with a return policy better than Walmart, there's absolutely no reason to buy a newer used car, truck, or SUV anywhere else. Just like Amazon, Hagerstown Ford will deliver the vehicle to you, where you are, and on your time. And if you don't want it, return it, no questions asked. Why waste your time at a car dealership playing the dumb back-and-forth games? Besides, we hate it more than you do. I assure you, no dealership from Winchester, Virginia to Washington, D.C. will beat our price. No dealership from Chambersburg, Pennsylvania to Baltimore, Maryland will beat our price. And no other dealership will allow you to return it if you don't want it. Hagerstown Ford absolutely provides the best experience at the best price. Visit HagerstownFord.com to schedule your VIP experience. 
Click on the vehicle you want and get your new ride delivered to you at no risk. See dealer for details. The Palace Lounge in Martinsburg is the place to be. Join us every night to relax and enjoy football or basketball games featuring either the Martinsburg Bulldogs, Shepherd University Rams, or West Virginia Mountaineers. We will have steak night every Wednesday, trip nights every Thursday, and now taco and margarita nights every Tuesday. You can find us on Facebook or call 304-267-7520. The Palace Lounge is located at 1350 Edwin Miller Boulevard in Martinsburg. Welcome into the post-game scoreboard show here on Talk Radio WRNR and TV 10, brought to you by Cody's Auto Body at 851 Wilson Street in Martinsburg, where you get the work done right the first time. Call 304-901-4777 or visit their Facebook page. Dylan Bishop here for Talk Radio WRNR and TV 10, give you the scoreboard show here after you just watched and or listened to... Martinsburg defeat Jefferson in varsity baseball action three to one to start things off at the new and improved P.O. Faulkner Park. We'll get into some scores around the rest of the world of sports here tonight, including the World Baseball Classic, which is currently entering the bottom of the sixth, the final, the championship of the World Baseball Classic. Bottom of the sixth, Japan leads the United States three to one. We'll go and look at what's going on around the NBA as well tonight. One game has gone final already in Orlando. The Magic defeat the Wizards 122 to 112. Three games ongoing right now, all in the second half, two in the fourth quarter, including Atlanta hosting the Detroit Pistons and leading 99 to 80 with 11 minutes left. 743 left in Brooklyn, where the Cavaliers lead the Nets 106-84. to 743 left there to go. Pelicans leading the Spurs in New Orleans 70-39 to with 1020 left in the third quarter. Two games in the NBA that have not tipped off yet tonight. 10 o'clock on NBA TV will be Sacramento hosting the Celtics. That's at 10 o'clock. 1030, the Clippers hosting the Oklahoma City Thunder. Big game with Western Conference playoff seeding implications there. We'll take a look at some scores around the National Hockey League as well. Seven minutes left in the third quarter, the third period, excuse me. Uh, Boston Bruins lead the Senators 2-1 to one with just 36 seconds left before final. The Predators lead the Sabres 7-3. to three. 130, 142 left in the third period. Canadiens lead the Lightning 3-2. to two. Tied up in New York. 2-2 two two between the Rangers and the Hurricanes with 7.42 left to go. With just a minute 45 left, another tie game in New Jersey between the Devils and the Wild. 6.11 left in the third period where the Flyers host the Panthers and lead 5-3. 8.33 left in the third period with the Capitals hosting the Columbus Blue Jackets tied at 5 apiece with 8.5 minutes left. After two periods, the Islanders Lead the Maple Leafs 3-1. to one. Four and a half minutes left in period number two. St. Louis Blues leading the Detroit Red Wings. Or excuse me, the game is tied 2-2. Two to two. Four minutes left in the second period for Winnipeg, up 2-1 to one against the Coyotes. And after one period, the Kraken lead the Stars 2-1. Two, two games that have not tipped off yet. It kicked off. 10 o'clock start times for both of these games. Anaheim and the Flames... That starts at 10 o'clock. And then Vancouver and Vegas at 10 o'clock. Both of those games on ESPN+. Plus. And again, the game that you just had here on Talk Radio WRNR and TV 10, it was Martinsburg 3, Jefferson 1 in varsity baseball action. Some other scores from around the EPAC in varsity baseball. Kaiser defeating Spring Mills 8 to nothing, Musselman defeating Washington 4 to nothing, And Hedgesville currently leading Hampshire 12-1 to in the top of the sixth inning. This has been the post-game scoreboard show presented to you by Cody's Auto Body here on Talk Radio WRNR and TV 10. My name is Dylan Bishop, hoping you have a good rest of your Tuesday night. You've been listening to West Virginia High School Baseball. 
Today's game broadcast has been brought to you by Parsons Ford of Martinsburg, The Skinner Law Firm, Laddies, Trips Flooring, Jambo Construction and Fencing, The Myriad Group of Financial Advisors, Smallwood and Small Insurance, CMA Honda of Winchester, Bechtel Jewelers, Cody's Auto Body, Rock's Local Markets,